Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Oh, man, I feel not even so much exhausted as I feel completely overwhelmed right now. We have got so many big developments from Bilderberg 2014 with global leaders going outside the compound, being confronted by journalists, journalists being roughed up, new video. Uh, we've got mainstream media being forced to cover it for the first time, even the London Independent saying, hey, it does violate a lot of laws to have world leaders meeting in secret with politicians, elected officials setting policy. Public servants meeting in secret setting policy uh, and I even um, well, I guess we got a video from CNBC where some of the guests and people are going well the public's got a point I mean there are a bunch of powerful elites meeting in secret and we have a right to know what they're talking about this is an official governmental meeting the Bilderberg group bragged a few weeks ago one of their major members to the German press that they created the euro and they set up most of the world's architecture currently and that they are controlling the planet to a great extent. And so they admit that they are setting policy. Yes, if 145 or so royalty, banking heads, heads of industry and government are all friends and they want to say, hey, next year, let's all put in our calendars. We're going to go to British Virgin Islands for two weeks and play golf. Undoubtedly, business is going to be conducted at night and stuff, and there'll be some breakaway meetings. But it's not helicopters and fences and secret police. And uh, Ed Balls, uh, the deputy prime minister of England, who I confronted last year inside BBC Studios, because I was on television right after him, so I was able to talk to him in the studio. We have that video where I bring up Bilderberg, the fact that they're setting policy, and I name the British law he's violating. Watson also confronts him in the hall as he leaves and mentions the law that he's violating. They really are violating these laws. And just because the federal laws here and the federal laws in England and others are being ignored doesn't mean that they're not still laws. And I personally am getting tired of it because these are the guys pushing gun control worldwide. These are the people pushing forced inoculation worldwide and population reduction. These are the people that are pushing everybody around. And these are the people trying to put in the smart grid that taxes and tracks and controls us. They're moving us into total authoritarianism. And that's why I've got a big beef with them. And then I'm always on the air with other shows, you know, TV shows, and they ask the question, well, Alex, you know, how do we know they're setting up world government? Well, they've bragged about it. But I thought it's secret. Why are they bragging? Well, criminals love to brag. And stuff they did 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 60 years ago, they will toot their horn about now. But they didn't do it till we exposed it and made their lying obsolete. So now they're just trying to act all confident about it. Well, of course we're building a private corporate world government. I mean, who wouldn't? I mean, we know how to run stuff better than you. And plus, we're not racist and, uh, you know, political correctness. You go debate transgender issues while we put cancer viruses in your vaccines. Or, uh, you know. We put so many chemicals in the water that the fish and frogs, the aquatic life is going sterile. Don't be sexist and bring that up. I mean, these people are out of control. And it'd be one thing if they're running our lives and building space bases, and we're, you know, we already launched our seventh you know, colony mission to Alpha Centauri. And that they were trying to get people to have brain boost and stuff. I'd be like, whoa, these people are really the elite. We should probably listen to them. These people are a bunch of scum, narcissists who hate humanity. And they are a major problem. I am your host, Alex Jones, and we're going to have big updates. There's been a lot of big developments, but I'm just going to save it until David Knight joins us in about 23 minutes from now at 33 after from Copenhagen, Denmark, the site of Bilderberg 2014. Then Paul Joseph Watson, 
There's been a whole other area covering uh, other developments with Bilderberg. Uh, they're on two different missions. He's going to be joining us at uh, 1230 Central or about an hour uh, and 20-something minutes from now, depending on what time zone you're listening to us or rebroadcast. So that is coming up. We will have totally open phones. I pledge to take a lot of calls. I'm getting pretty good at that when I do open the phones up. In the third hour on a Friday, free-for-all, wild card Friday, whatever issue you want to raise, agree, disagree, uh, yell at me, tell me how great I am. We don't want to hear that. You're allowed to yell at me, no saying how great I am. Uh, anyways, uh, it's just not thought-provoking. Any issue you want to cover, we're going to do it in the third hour today. I'm being a little bit silly. Where to start? Let me cover other big breaking news because it's a big news day on this uh, Friday, the 30th day of May. And walk through some of what's coming up and then get into embattled Veterans Affairs Secretary uh, General Eric Shinseki resigning. And, and before we went live, uh, I was uh, in the coffee room. I don't usually do this anymore because it's so hard to listen to him and look at him. And just to hear the endless deception that comes out of his mouth. But I did, I did watch uh, pretty much Obama's entire press conference, 20 minutes of it. So maybe we'll go through it today or a transcript and cover some of the lies. But, I mean, it was all bull. So it's really no point at this point. I mean, should I get up here and prove that 2 plus 2 equals 4, even though they teach it equals whatever he says? Uh, should I... Go on air and explain to you that raising the debt limit does raise the debt. He says it doesn't. Should I get up here and explain that it is in the bill, $5,000 fine for not getting Obamacare, even though they deny it's in there? Should I show you the bill where it has death panels, even though they say it isn't there? I mean, at a certain point, it really just becomes repetitive to go over their lies. But we've got to do it, so we will. I have done a lot of <clears throat> studying, and as listeners, you've done a lot of studying, I know, what our guests have covered here on the, the radio broadcast over the years. Guests like Doug Rocky, who was the head of the DU program for the Department of Defense after he was the head of it for the Army and who wrote the official manual, uh, what was it, 1987, uh, that is still used by the Army and, and other armed services for the use, containment, cleanup of depleted uranium mun um, munitions. <clears throat> now, why am I just starting there? Because to understand what's happening to the troops, and to understand it's premeditated on record. When I even start getting into an area like the veterans and the troops, there is an explosion of data in my memory and my mind of publicly available, prima facie, undisputed, absolute, incontrovertible facts in thousands of different secret tests that have been declassified that killed tens of thousands of active duty troops from the 30s right through until now. And the vaccines and the medical experiments, they do it all in plain view. So of course there's an attitude at most VAs that the veterans are garbage, are scum, and are on welfare. And we've had countless whistleblowers the last three weeks with Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs interviewing him on the nightly news and on the website, Infowars.com, where senior people at the VA and senior and, and nurses and doctors and people going public, where they call them welfare queens and subhuman and hate them. And there is a minority of people in the VA, mainly veterans, who try to take care of the veterans, even though it's a tough job and the money's diverted and the forms are falsified. I mean, they'll say, it's come out in the news, I told you this a long time ago, but it's in the news this week, that they'll say they've done a surgery to remove a cancer and they just won't remove it 
and won't even do the surgery and let them die. And by the way, we're not talking about 85-year-old Korea War vets or 89-year-old World War II vets, which I think it's really evil to not give them treatment. But there's the argument, well, they're old and they can't be helped. It's just better they die. We're talking about 25-year-old Marine Corps and Army vets that we now learn one of the biggest suicide reasons is that they literally can't get shrapnel removed. I mean, folks, it should have told you everything you needed to know when I, I learned about it in mainstream news a few years ago that they are ordering the volunteer army, that's not volunteer, in automatic re-up, and the fact that people don't have the money or the health care they need already, they're ordering people who've had their feet blown off and hands blown off. They are slapping robot hands and legs on them that don't even work and are ordering them back into combat. Nobody's ever done that. They are using them up like I put 10 gallons of gas in my truck. But when I put 10 gallons in it, it's going to be burned up. It's not alive. It's inanimate. It creates carbon dioxide, plants breathe, and puts out some other toxic stuff. But I, it, it's not personal. It'd be one thing if they were using up the troops and they were some alien species and just didn't care about them. Let's say aliens posing as humans were running things and they were acting like this. They would, you know, they've got 7,000 IQs. We're dumb animals to them. Uh, and, you know, I eat cows. And I, it wouldn't be personal. I'd still want to defeat the alien species. These are our own humans, and they like treating the troops bad. On record. They enjoy it. These people are scum. Because here's the deal. If you're doing bad things to innocent people, and you don't want to take care of the old or the young or the the infirm, and you don't have a natural nurturing thing in you to want to help people. You can just write people off and let them die. When you're doing things like that, it's going to hurt you, and you're going to feel bad if you've got any soul, any humanity. But for the people that will do this, they like it, folks. That's why they excel in this system. They knew in 1946, and we've read the paper on air with Dr. Rocky, for the exact name of the uh, Pentagon Department of Defense memo, but I think it's radioactive particles and gases as a weapon. And in the big multi-hundred page paper that was declassified in the 80s, they say we could create DU weapons with our reactor waste and nuclear weapons production waste, atomic weapons production waste at the time, and it'll shoot through basically anything. The kinetic power is unbelievable. The problem is it creates particles of it that are a death sentence when any mammal comes in contact with them and will massively reduce lifespan and will cause all sorts of degenerative effects. So from the 40s until 1990, no one in the world would use DU. The U.S. military had three places they would let the A-10 Warthog tank killers and, and, and pilots test on, and, and those were areas you didn't send humans into, areas they decided to shoot old tanks up with, and they had bunker busters tipped with it that were for wartime use, and they had caches of it deployed all over Eastern Europe. If the Russians, with 10 to 1 tank superiority, poured in across in a Soviet invasion of Western Europe, they would then in what would already become a nuclear war, hand out the DU weapons. And the Russians have them as well. It's a doomsday weapon. You're going to go ahead and have a nuclear war. You, you use it. Okay? It's an emergency weapon. What changed from 1946 to 1990? What changed in 87? Rocky's report said, of course we can't use it, because they were looking at using it more. And it's totally deadly. And, and, and you know, he even kind of worked with them and said, well, if you wear decontamination suits and then it's drug off and buried in big pits and everyone's washed off immediately and, you, you know, you wear breathers, you know, the risk might not be that, you know, too bad if it doesn't go through your skin. You understand? But, but we shouldn't use it. And they went, you know what? We're going to use it. And the Israelis started using it. They use it in Gaza, and it all blows right back on Israel. I mean, let's say the Israelis don't think the Gazan Palestinians are humans. 
are you human when it blows back on you? See, this is the classic thing of where you treat someone like they're not a human, it blows back on you. It's the archetype of the Germans in World War I were the first to use nerve gas, primitive nerve gas, chlorine gas, mustard gas. They would shoot it across, and then the wind would just turn and blow it right back on them half the time. I mean, this is madness, ladies and gentlemen. So you want to talk about, did they know? Oh, and then I, I saw Shepard Smith yesterday blowing up at his guest, going, how dare you say Obama's involved? That's Republican politics. They're trying to score points on this. Of course it's political. That doesn't matter. It's gotten worse under Obama because it's on purpose and they hate the veterans. Everybody I talk to, including Democrats, says the VA is much worse in the last six years because they hate the troops more than ever. And that culture of hating troops has now totally taken over. So often I hear from people saying, man, you know, you're such a pessimist. You think there's these evil people that run everything and we have no power. No, that's the opposite of what I'm saying. There are corrupt special interests and different combines worldwide, and we've identified the main three groups and substratas and mafias. And they use pretty much the same systems because it's what works the best to control people. And so it's the system that unifies the evil. Coral reefs all over the world look the same. They're different species of fish, different species of coral, but they pretty much look the same because that's what works. And the systems the globalists have developed out of all these cultures and civilizations and empires are pretty similar because it's what works in an authoritarian model. We go through patterns. We only live 74 years on average, men, women, 76. It's been that way for thousands of years. We feel like we're individuals, but we really are in a collective. But... We are individuals who make individual choices that shapes the collective, not globalists trying to create a false collective that they program and shape. That's what I'm getting at here is there is a big globalist Anglo-American, Dutch, German, New World Order merged with the Rothschilds mafia. That is the dominant global force because the West was the best. The West had the best art, literature, renaissance, and statistically some of the best scientists. The talent. There's talent everywhere. I mean, it's like racers. I mean, if, you know, if, if a top runner in a two-mile race is a, two seconds faster than the other guy, that's not really much. It's, but it doesn't matter. He's still the world champion. Well, the globalists are a couple steps ahead of everybody. Does that mean the Chinese elite aren't absolutely evil? No, they're really evil. Does that mean the Russian elite aren't evil? No, they're evil. Because they're cheating to control society. They're using tricks to be in control that are bad. Because good people don't want to be in power and don't want to dominate people. We are then automatically supplanted by the evil ones, not because they're better than us, but because we won't stand up against them until it's almost too late. Then we do, we defeat them, a new renaissance happens, we become decadent in the cycle, they creep back in and take control. And this time, if we don't reverse them, they're going to probably destroy the planet, irrevocably destroy the genetic code of, of the human race, and really wreck our chances of becoming a type one civilization and setting up off-world colonies. And then you can decide if you want to be a transhumanist and, and leave one colony and do whatever you want here, or you want to go to this colony where people maintain their humanity. I mean, real freedom. We need a renaissance, trailblazing explorer system. That's what humans do. That's what makes us great. We change our environment. We do evolve f faster than any other species. We are incredible. And we need to have a view that we're incredible and amazing, not the view put out by the Bilderberg Group that the general public is trash while they try to dumb us down. That sin against life and against true competition is an unbelievable blasphemy. And if you don't believe in God, that's your issue. I'm saying it's a blasphemy against art. It's a blasphemy against beauty. It's a blasphemy against free will. 
It is a tyrannical, authoritarian blasphemy against my soul and my very programming. And I have a right to self-determine against it. And if I'm attacked, I have a right at warfare. And I am in warfare and information war with the truth, viciously attacking my enemy. And I want you to join me in attacking the enemy as well. Because they're your enemy one way or another. They're attacking you, whether you admit it or not. These people are absolutely anathema to everything good. I like driving by beautiful farmers' fields and seeing the, 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 the beautiful rows of wheat or corn. I love seeing happy, beautiful, excited people. These globalists are the pessimists who don't believe in humanity and who think we're ugly and bad, so they're making it a self-fulfilling prophecy and who are waging war against humanity because to a man and a woman, I've studied them, they like ugliness, and they don't like your good-looking wife. They don't like you if you're good-looking. They don't like your art. They don't like your healthy kids. They don't like you having your own wealth. They want it all for themselves. And they're not going to stop, and they need to be smashed. And I mean to smash them. Because ideas are bulletproof and are spreading quickly right now. And we, more and more, are setting the narrative. And our narrative isn't perfect, but it points towards the pole star. It points towards justice. We're trying to be good. And we will defeat the globalists. This whole VA thing is on purpose, period. We're about to go to our reporters from Bilderberg 2014. We, they have a lot of breaking news, a whole bunch of exclusive videos that really show the illegality that's going on. We need to get a report out on this, not just the photos and the video, because it's very newsworthy. That Ed Balls, the shadow chancellor, and in England, it's a complex title, but he's the deputy prime minister is what it is. He's like the vice president. Basically, the vice president of England is creeping into the meeting and having to show his credentials to the moron security guard people that don't know who he is. Because it's not enough that he has a B around his neck and has the lanyard. They, you know, they want to check it. And... So they're sitting there talking to this guy, and he's got all these official files in his hands, clearly going in to set policy, and under multiple uh, laws in England, it's illegal. And then we've got all our different acts here that make it as legal as well. Hillary Clinton got fined, what was it, $400,000 back in the 90s uh, for violating the Logan Act, and they have similar laws there. But in England, it's in the newspapers that it looks like what he's doing is illegal, so a uh, real investigation's heating up. We're going to talk about that, but... but I mean, what does he have to do? Have like MI6 files officially? I mean, he's going with all these files. It's so, I mean, they're in there setting policy, ladies and gentlemen. With the heads of corporations that give them political donations. This is outrageous. We're showing that footage uh, right now uh, of uh, Balls uh, doing all this. And again, there's a shot where he's got all the different files up against his chest. We'll show that in a moment. And I guess that's not even the security guard. That's the police. But uh, we're going to uh, also be talking again to Paul Watson coming up at the bottom of the next hour. Uh, but uh, I tell you, the bureaucracy of them trying to put all of us collectively in a control grid prison to protect themselves shows how they're now in a prison as well of their own making. See, what you try to do to somebody else generally ends up happening to you. And the globalists have knowledge to how, of how to dominate. They do not have long-term wisdom of, gee, is this good for my children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren, what I'm doing to humanity? Well, yes, I'm making my house powerful and great and big. Yeah, but I look at your kids. They're all basically on average messes. I, I mean, you are destroying your genetic line. You are committing a crime against your name. It's just not good. And the argument is, well, I'm not really a bad person. Um, I'm in a larger corrupt system, and I work within it to try to do better at certain points. But you never do. I'm not saying everybody at Bilderberg is evil. I'm not even saying they run the whole world. They are a key organization that admits they set up the plan for the European Union, and that's been declassified BBC in the 90s reported that and interviewed the head of the Bilderberg group at the time, Lord Healy. And they were in, again, the German newspapers two weeks ago bragging that they're the most powerful. I don't know. Uh, according to Helmut Schmidt in his book, Men in Power as a Political Retrospective, German Chancellor, 
he said it was probably the most powerful, along with, with Trilateral Commission and Bohemian Grove. And he went on to say, we actually get a lot done at Bohemian Grove, and it's my favorite place. Yeah, because they have sex by night and party and get drunk and make decisions by day. It is a beautiful area in Northern California, one of the prettiest places on the planet. But the issue is, we don't like you running our lives and then saying you're not. See, once we force them to admit they are making a lot of the decisions, then we have to say, what are those decisions? Oh, you didn't have a right to make those decisions. And their main decision, and then we're going to our reporters, is, and is on record, and they've already done this in countless third world and old world countries, and are now moving to first world countries, like Spain, like Italy, like Germany, like the United States, like the UK, Ireland, Scotland, England. They are taking the pension funds of private pensioners. It's their money. They've already paid taxes on it on average four times. And they are taking them in increments using the same systems worldwide and getting so arrogant, they're now taking money directly out of people's bank accounts in Cyprus and other places and seizing of the hundreds of Greek islands, there's hundreds. Oh, you owe me three billion. Uh, uh, I want this island for, that, that's valued at four billion. And they get this giant Greek island that was in the Daily Mail last year and the Associated Press and everywhere else. And then it turned out that particular billionaire, he got the government to sign on to cover his derivatives too big to fail and then, and then turned around and went, see, now you owe me money. You bail them out. And then, but now your money's been given to them, and now they're the executor and the manager. And then they go, you know what? We want to appoint the new leader of Greece, and we're going to appoint the leader of Spain. They're moving towards that more and more. And we're going to appoint the leader uh, of Italy. They actually did that. And it's just, oh, we now have technocrats appointed, and it's the Bilderberg Group. Bilderberg and Goldman Sachs members, rotating door, revolving door, are now being appointed. They were appointing people in Iceland to run things, but the Icelanders basically rioted and, and refused to work and do stuff for one year until they got a new government and then they started arresting the finance ministers and found out, guess what, 93% of the money that was owed was not theirs. It, it was bankers in England signing them on to their debts. And telling 400,000 hardworking Vikings in Iceland who were all out there with their bicycles and their kids and all friendly and so nice and good until they were going to lose everything. And they finally became humans again because they were always humans, nice, sweet Vikings. But then they started acting more like mean Vikings and now they've got their country back. See, the veneer of civilization wipes off very quickly. That's why they want police states and checkpoints and nanny states, not because they want to protect you. I was downtown, and I'm going to the guest. I was downtown, um, I guess it was Sunday, or yeah, it was Sunday. Or was it Monday? Was it the holiday? I was visiting some friends, and I was out on their balcony, we were barbecuing, and a big storm, beautiful storms blow in, and we're looking at it from, you know, 20 stories up, and these beautiful storms blow in over Lake Austin and over the river. And you can see the sun in the, in the distance. You know, it's one of those stormy days where you can see 30 miles in all directions. And there was no tornado. I went in and looked because the police were acting crazy. They were running around on speedboats saying, get off the lake, get off the lake, emergency, emergency. And making kayakers get off and all the rest of this for a rainstorm that was coming in. So I thought, is there a tornado? And I, and I ran and, 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 you know, looked on uh, my, my, my buddy's computer. Oh, there's no tornado coming. And went back out, was checking on my iPhone. And then we went back in, the storm blew through, ate some barbecue, and walked back out. And it's just barely raining. And there are police running around in Lake Austin and at the parks and down by their building on loudspeakers saying, don't come outside. It's dangerous. Uh, dangerous weather conditions. I mean, folks, they're now saying don't go outside when it's raining. And in England, they arrest you if you say the word homosexual or, or girl, because someone said it was hurtful. And Michelle Obama's telling us what to eat now. 
and they are totally destroying the culture, destroying any form of debate. There's a big video up on Drudge right now. It's also on Infowars.com with a big comedian and writer, you know, coming out uh, and saying, you know, there's a gay mafia. And if you even make a joke, everybody should be fair game. You are destroyed and shut down. And that's pretty authoritarian. That's pretty scary. In fact, there's the headline, Adam Carolla on gay mafia. And me, I've never bashed, quote, gays, but if I want to use the scientific term, heterosexual, homosexual, you want to have me arrested? I mean, you're an authoritarian. I don't like you. And not because of your sexual preference, but because you are a control freak trying to use our goodwill to enslave us and in end free speech. And I don't like that. And I'll, I'll start, you know, really coming after people if they want to try to sit there and dictate everything because you're an authoritarian being used by the globalist authoritarians with political correctness to silence any form of dissent or free speech. And I don't want to live in North Korea. Now, while we're all busy debating the next revolution, transgender, because they've normalized everything else now, just as a political fighting point, then it'll be bestiality, on and on and on, just to create a fight is the whole issue. While we're all busy debating that all day, the troops are killing themselves 24 a day, that's every hour, and most of it's because they can't get health care and they're being treated like crap. If vets are treated good, they tend to not commit suicide and, and adjust to society. If they're treated badly, they flip out. And no one's been abused more than this current generation. We hear about greatest generation, World War II vets. Yeah, my grandfathers were in World War II, but they both served a couple tours. One of them one tour, the other two tours. I, I mean, it was some rough fighting too, but... I mean, I know people that have served 20 tours in combat like my cousin, volunteer, 31 years U.S. Army. And he, he is a machine. He wouldn't probably be do well outside of it. Every time he gets out for six months or something, he goes and re-ups. He just can't help it. This is all he knows how to do. I mean, if your car's got a problem or your gun's got an issue or, he, or you want you to come fix your roof at 2 a.m., the guy just fixes things and does things and, and, and just carries things and just is ready. I mean, just a machine. Beyond my dad, because my dad's from the same country, you know, hardworking people. He loves to work. He loves to get stuff done. I mean, I've got family members, not just one, but a bunch who are, who are farm boys who are just machines, ladies and gentlemen. And they can adjust. They can handle it because they're so tough. The, the average per I couldn't handle it. The average person can't go see three, four hardcore tours and then come back and be treated like crap by the VA. They're going to go blow their head off. And th there's an attitude of anti-humanism anti-humans are good in the globalists that's trickling down now and that's what you hear at the VA they go, oh, we all just take these vets out and shoot them they're a bunch of scum oh they're getting welfare oh they want surgeries oh just get you know it's because they've put people in place that will take the funding away and siphon it off they don't want to take care of the veterans of course it got worse under Shinseki that's the directive of course it got worse under Obama. We've got death panels now. The VA is the model of everything. People go, but government wants to give us something free, help old ladies. They use your soft heart. They want control of health care to run your life. And it's come out of the Club of Rome and Bilderberg and the Trilateral Commission and these groups. The people that write the Obamacare to bankrupt the old system, to get control of your life, to give you less health care for more money. It's a screw job. Because evil people don't like to manage stuff and compete. So they argue that an Agenda 21 imploding society is something they built and designed. All they're doing is actuarying and sucking off a collapse, blowing up the building and saying what artists they are in command destruction. Because they're not good managers, they're not good people, they're not good leaders. They don't want to compete with the Renaissance. They are the Dark Age. They are neo-feudalism. And the Club of Rome in 1967, I've gone to the UT library, I show shots of it in my film Endgame. They say they want to recreate neo-feudalism. They want to recreate feudalism. I mean, these people are scum. And then they're saving the earth by screwing it up, and I'm supposed to crawl in some ditch and just give up my destiny and my children's destiny and your destiny? It doesn't mean you have to accept my destiny. Doesn't mean you have to accept my view of the world, but believe me, folks, you better decide what you want because they've already decided you're not in the future.
And if they can treat foster kids and minorities and veterans, anybody in their clutches, like absolute hell with secret experiments and all the control and all the dumbing down, they'll do it to you next. And they are doing it to you already. These people are the scum of the earth. Now we're going to have David Knight with us 15 minutes into the next hour. Then we're going to have Paul Watson with us and open phones the full next hour. There's so much breaking Bilderberg news at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. We need some big master coverage article that has the right headline so it captures people's attention. Because this is sensational information for liberty and exposing tyranny, but it's, it, there's just so much of it. It's all just kind of blurbed out. We've got Schmidt caught on video and photos. We've got him. The head of Google, we've got uh, them, them with you know uh, files falling out, clearly doing official business that needs to be investigated. There's already criminal investigations in England. This puts it over the top, balls with official files going in, claiming they're just having impromptu cocktail parties. Clearly, they're setting policy. We need articles on that. Uh, the, the, you know, the, the, they're deciding the future of, of, of NSA spying worldwide. That's come out in their agenda. That should be investigated. Policies being set. That's really the angle that should be looked at here. And their anti-human move to cut the pension funds and not give vets care and to, quote, cut entitlements. Yeah, they can cut entitlements. How about their banker bailouts first, you see? These are the people setting the agenda. And we've got bombshell HD video and photos. We need to get it all condensed and boiled down into one big article dealing with official business being set, and there needs to be a serious investigation, and the people need to push for it. That's what the Independent and others are saying. We're the Bilderberg experts. We need the big articles on this and the videos on this, boiling it all together. Now, we're going to go to break in a few minutes, but I want to come back uh, right now um, after the break to David Knight for 15 minutes into the next hour and, and kind of go over all the stuff that's been breaking at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. But I need Watson and others to do that big article now. Now's the time for over the weekend to really boil down that why this is bad. Now, we're going to go to break in a moment. I first want to say something. We fund this operation selling incredibly high-quality stainless steel, gravity-fed filters that cut out the glyphosates and fluoride and annihilate the competition. And my point is, there's just no reason to buy any other water filter but ProPure with a G2.0. For the price, it's the same price as the competitor or lower with 10% off promo code WATER. And it'll help you and your family at a massive level, and it'll fund this vicious truth-telling, open bias towards truth, open pro-human, pro-God, pro-family, pro-honor, and chivalry. We need your support, and you get a great product at the same time, InfoWarsStore.com. We only got a few thousand test run bottles, the super feminine vitality. It's almost sold out. It will be sold out by next week, and it will probably take three weeks to a month to get more of it. And we're having even bigger responses with women's energy workout libido with this than men have a super male. And super male had a bigger effect on women, and we didn't know why. I guess women are more sensitive to these herbs. Now with the feminine one for women, it's even crazier from what we've seen. Find out for yourself, regardless you're supporting the transmission. If you want it, it's going to sell out. Super Female Vitality, InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. When it sells out, there's still the Super Male. We have plenty of that in stock. And then we have the new X2, ladies and gentlemen. That is the purple original... Millions of years old iodine crystals from seven to 12,000 feet. We're the only ones that have it. And it turns bright purple on paper. All other iodines turn black. And we've talked to scientists, that's because they're bound. It's not real nascent. This, the reason this is so special is it goes right into your blood. Survival Shield X2, we have plenty of it, but it may still sell out in about two weeks. I don't know how soon we can get more. If you want to stock up on it and it supports the broadcast, nobody's got iodine like this, X2. Bilderberg didn't want us to know they existed because then we'd start looking into them. I know I'm stating the obvious. So we've been looking into them. Now we force the public to know they exist. That raises the credibility of what they call conspiracy theorists, i.e. people that ask questions. So we're now being heretics and showing that the heretics are actually the good people telling the truth against the state-run religion of mindlessness and 2 plus 2 equals 5. And Michelle Obama tells your kids what to eat. I'm rebelling against this. I'm not complying, and I'm decrying it with my First Amendment, a powerful weapon. 
comes before the second. And so I need all the writers and, and, and other talk show hosts, if you're hearing me, you want to bring them down, point out Ed Balls. We have the videos of him being confronted by myself and Watson denying he's doing state-run business. Now we have what looks like state-run media files clearly going in for serious policy meetings. Not to play tiddlywinks, there needs to be an investigation. We list this British law. The Independent's already done it. Now we have him showing he's doing official meetings. And then there's a bunch of other issues. And then we can crack these people wide open, but we have to believe and not be pessimist. If you're a pessimist, study came out this week, you're three times more likely to have dementia and Alzheimer's. People are in a coma. You're not really living. We have to, all of us, wake up and realize what's happening. We've got a lot of videos coming up with you in the next hour, David Knight. Then Paul Watson joins us at the bottom of the next hour. We're going to walk through it all, but give us an update of what's coming up in the next hour and some of the highlights since we talked to you 24 hours a day, 24 hours uh, yesterday, as you report from Bilderberg 2014. Well, Alex, they're having, uh, they're toasting champagne here, and somebody's just come over to the fence to talk, so we're going to go see what he has to say. Yeah. Oh, it's one of the security people telling you not to put cameras in. Go ahead this and talk a, to him. This is a, no. In the, in the Netherlands, you were always, uh, like I think in all countries, you're always busy with little things. Yeah. And now we get three days of discussing big issues. Very intense. Well, that's a Bilderberg Group member. Ask who he is. Very intense. Yeah. It starts at 8 o'clock in the morning. Ask him who he is. Oh, okay. This is uh, Dietrich Sampson. And who are you with? I'm uh, from the Dutch Labour Party. I'm a politician. Oh, okay. But are you okay. here in your formal or formal or informal function? Well, I'm formal because I'm, I, and being a politician, you're 24/7. So there's no way of, yeah. of, so of exiting my my I role. So let's say if if your prime minister asked you what you were talking about here, yes. you would surely tell him yeah, everything. I would. Could I ask whether the heads of banks such as um, HSB, HSBC, Douglas Flint, is he there in his? Formal or informal capacity? Is he there? I'm not sure. You you know the list oh. better than I do. It's 106 well, Peter, participants and it's only Peter one. Sutherland from yeah, Goldman Sachs there. International. He's there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, is he formal or informal? Is he still a member of, is he still head of Goldman Sachs International? Is he? He I'm, still is. He yeah. still is. Okay. All right. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, no, I, I don't know, actually. Um, yeah. So he's, he's know, really, he's a member of British American Business. Yeah. The lobbying group. Which well, there's, there's, there's here, so, let me explain. There's here, there's scientists here. Uh, there's politicians like me. Yeah. Uh, there's business people here. Yeah. So when does a lobby still? Is, is, is a lobby still? Uh, we got some Skype are, are, are you being lobbied? No. No. T but TTIP is a nice discussion. It's a good discussion to mm, have. have. I mean, have you had that discussion? Yeah. Well, not here. Not here at this moment. Have Maybe we will have ask him about world. trying to prop up the euro. We know that's what they're really talking about. Ask him about that. That's, that's like everybody. I think like you, or we are worried about what happens there. I mean, nobody wants a, an armed conflict, and Have it's you already had happening. Intelligence sharing discussion. No. Ask about propping up the EU. Are you talking about popping up the day after? I'm not sure. Are you talking about popping up the euro? No. No. We no. talked about Europe. We talked yeah. about what to do next for Europe. Oh. Well, and basically, what, what I said in the discussion is that people are fed up with. Uh, discussions about treaty chains and, and euro and whatever the one drops. Oh my gosh, I hate having to go to break right now. Oh my goodness. Folks, I told everybody Thank the issue is that they're easier. setting official business inside. We're getting this footage of this, so you'll all get to hear it. Today. Major breaking news as the leader of the Labour Party from major country. All right, we only got him ID'd once. He's behind the Bilderberg fence. He's the leader of a major Labour Party, Dietrich something. We're looking up his name right now. I believe David Knight can interrupt right now. He can hear me down the Skype. Uh, and uh, recap, and then and then formally, butt in front of the reporters that are there that are asking their questions. They're they're somewhat good. They're asking about him in official capacity. He admitted he's operating in official capacity. Uh, that may mean in his country that's not illegal. I doubt that. When he said we're not trying to prop up the euro, he said no, nine, which, which shows they are. That's what they're really trying to do. That's their main global takeover system with NATO. I want to ask him some questions. Uh, David Knight, can you hear me? It's Dietrich Samson. And uh, he is the uh, leader, Dutch politician, yeah, you know, of the Labour Party. That's the biggest party uh, in the Netherlands. So that guy's very powerful uh, in his country. Uh, l l l let's talk to him. Go ahead, David. David, get some questions in. 
you know, who knows? You might be having more. You might be invited back. Let's hope. He's well, also the leader of the parliament. He's the speaker of the house, basically. Energy. Three um, days. Do they? Well, how do they structure it? Do they have the in, the kind of experts on a panel yeah, giving it's, presentations? It's very, it's very classical. You could say it's very boring, but it's like like normal, uh, like lots of conferences. You have experts on a panel, and then yeah, he's a green piecer. That means carbon taxer, leftist. Are you an expert for any of these no, particular not, not panels? This time. Ask him where he stands on carbon taxes, Knight. Good, yeah, you have to be vocal. You can't, you have to <laughs> it's okay with that reporter uh, crew to no. ask some of the questions, but we need to butt in here. Because there's no media there, you don't have to perform. How that's come, nice. How that's, that's, a, that's the advantage of having no cameras inside. The disadvantage is no transparency. The, the advantage yeah. is that everybody can speak freely and, and doesn't. Do you, you know what, do what you happens to. Do you feel a little to, worried that when people at such a government official uh, and people like um, Jay. This has never happened before, folks. What's happening right now? In front of banks. At the meeting. Uh, I think he's even violating the internal agreement. But they know it's all blown wide open now. Oh, I wish I could ask questions. She's ready. You can ask questions. Carbon taxes. Guarantee you that's on the agenda. And, and you know, inside information is, is kind of quite yeah, but sensitive. Not, but these why speakers are speaking so freely in, in front of them? Well, well, well they're, they're not speaking completely said freely. You, there was, there more was free, free no, more free than when there's a camera. I love it that, that you politicians having frank and free discussion, yeah. but not in front of um, Lazo or Goldman Sachs. Or oh, H yeah, no, or it's HSBC. even better. It's even better because why we, should they know? Because why should we, they we know? talk about we talk as the as, trends. No, as politicians, I talk about, as a politician worried about banks, I talk about the need for banks. Ask him to about behave. LIBOR and carbon taxes. Tell David to do that or put the earpiece in. Can, can you tell us, have you talked about LIBOR, the LIBOR scandal, or carbon taxes? No, no I think the LIBOR, I, I think the LIBOR sa uh, scandal is a good example of banks not behaving. Yes, in fact. Yes. It's a good yeah. example. Martha I would say Bay so. Yeah. Martha, yeah, I would say so too. Martha yeah. Bages, who is on the um, steering committee, actually had to resign from um, as the CEO of Barclays. Bring up the Lockheed like scandal and Prince Bernhard. That'll hit him Don't hard. They uh, there was a Dutch bank that was very trusted. Now, the, the, the guy who started this, Prince Bernhard, he, he was caught up in a Lockheed scandal. Yeah. Do, do you know about that? Yeah, we, I know about it. But it was yeah. in the 70s. I mean, I read it, but it was before I was born, actually. They, but, they, right. had, they had to Well, you know, before you were born, born they plotted the, uh, the Euro as well as the no. European Union. I think that was after. Them. That was... That was Uh, we got bad Skype. Just get him one more message. The crew's doing a great job. I'm just. I'm not saying you planned it. I'm saying that uh, Bilderberg did. So we believe that there's real policy being crafted here. Maybe not in the discussion groups no, that I you're part think, of. I don't think policy is crafted here. But Bilderberg course. bragged to the German News last week. They're the most powerful, and they do set policy. Throw it in his face. It's good yeah. for international. In a German paper just last week, a Bilderberg member said that he felt that this was far more important than Davos. That Davos was just a PR group. I cannot you know. compare it. I wasn't the Davos, but I think it's not. It, it's 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 a similar type of meeting. And a former. All right, David. We're going to break. Grill him. We're going to come back. I want to hear what happens after. Keep keep grilling. This is a big deal. All right. That, um, Get his take on NSA spying. That reportedly is on the real agenda. They're deciding uh, between the countries right now what they're going to do to try to cover this up. Ask about NSA, nail him down, say what's the real agenda? We're gonna come right back. This is this is big Bilderberg coverage through the fence, talking to the one of the most powerful Dutch. All right, David Knight is there talking to the leader of the Parliament of the Netherlands. Who's a Bilderberg member um, talking to them through the fence. This is unprecedented. Let's go to the feed. Uh, oh, I just want to ask you a quick question. Okay, it was uh, there was a question: Does privacy exist? Have they answered that question yet? Because we have, uh, we have yeah, exactly, we have uh, uh, former head of the NSA and CIA are there. It will be on the agenda in the next days. It wasn't, oh, okay. It wasn't One more today. question. Okay. Um, um, few well, participants excuse, are normally dis discouraged to to take uh, out to the media anything that happens in here. Well, I'm not. Yeah, exactly. But nobody. Why? Why? So, why have you approached? Maybe are you I'm breaking a, protocol? I'm just, no, no, no. I'm no. not breaking protocol. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm allowed to do this. I'm a former Greenpeace activist. Maybe that's why I understand what happens when you when you stand outside after behind the gate. <laughs> well, thank you for talking to us. Appreciate right. it. Thank you so much. You. Bye bye. Yeah. All right, Alex. Um, David Knight, was, unprecedented. Uh, Give us your take on what we missed during break. Well, he was the labor leader. What was the country that he was from? Holland. Holland. Yeah, from the Netherlands. It's the Netherlands. Uh, 
social, de social Democrat, uh, labor leader. He said he had been a former Greenpeace activist, so that's why uh, he wanted to come out and talk to us. He said he knows what it's like to be on the outside. Let me He's get here Dietrich Samsung. Yes, yes, that's correct. Now, you know, Alex, we, we've, we've talked to him, and uh, we had the video of George Ball with all of the, the paper files. And I think it's kind of interesting that he had so many paper files. Because one of the things that they're talking about here is, does privacy exist? And he said, I asked him about that. He says, well, that's the next meeting that's coming up right now. So they're going to find out if privacy exists. Ed Balls knows privacy doesn't exist. That's why he's got all this stuff written down on volume after volume of uh, paperwork, because that's the only thing that's secure anymore. Why? Because of men like uh, the former NSA chief, uh, Keith Alexander, and, and uh, David Petraeus, because they have basically penetrated everybody's personal and private information. And that Includes these people. So they put this stuff on paper. They meet in secret face to face so they can say the things that they can tra can't transmit uh, via email. So that's, that's what's going on here, essentially. And the story that this morning, the key story this morning, was not what's people asking what's going on inside of Bilderberg. It wasn't even the Danish people asking, why are we spending millions, the equivalent of millions of dollars on security here? Because they've put up a massive amount of uh, barricades, concrete barricades. They worked, uh, you know, essentially 24 hours. I mean, they worked through the night because we were here late uh, at night, that first feed that we did. And most of these barricades were put up after we left, and we, we probably didn't leave till about uh, 9, 9 p.m. here this time. And uh, so they've got a massive amount of uh, security infrastructure here, as well as a massive amount of uh, police officers. It's costing them a fortune. They didn't ask about that. The lead story, Alex, today was InfoWars criticizing the police for uh, the way they arrested that fellow, whether or not he, they used excessive force. That was the lead story this morning. We came down here early this morning. Uh, Karen was over in the uh, photography area where she'd been successful getting joggers. We figured we'd get some people before they uh, doing morning jogs before breakfast. And uh, evidently, uh, they'd, they'd seen the picture of David Petraeus, so we didn't get any joggers. What we did get was a journalist from the leading television station here in Denmark. Uh, it's Channel 2, and his name is Christian Ring Hansen Holt, journalist and political correspondent. And what he wanted to do was to talk to us and to essentially defend the police. He thought we had uh, over-criticized the actions that took place, ignoring what happened to Josh. Uh, Karen brought that up, you know, the fact that he was accosted by the police. They wanted all of his identity papers, please, because he was merely carrying a camera through the hotel lobby that we were staying in. He wasn't taking any pictures. Somebody reported him as a suspicious person, so they tracked him down. That happened before any of the reports went up. But evidently, this was the number one news story. We've seen this happen before when they went to Bilderberg in England. What they did was they singled out the, the protester that was the craziest dressed, and they made it about that. So there weren't that many protesters this year. So what they did was they made it a story about us covering the arrest and what we feel is excessive force. We've uploaded a report, or at least it was uploading before we came over here. Uh, my response to it, I basically addressed the Danish people and said, you need to have a discussion as to what excessive force is. We really haven't had that discussion sufficiently in America yet. But the same people who are meeting over here are going to be selling military industrial complex type weapons. They're going to be selling the police surveillance state equipment to the Danish police, as well as they do to the American police. Again, They're folks, going to be doing that worldwide. If you just joined us, David Knight is reporting live from Copenhagen, Denmark, side of Bilderberg, 2014. The event is now in full swing, and the unprecedented issue is, for me, uh, the fact that we had a Bilderberg Group member, the head of the Dutch Parliament. Uh, which is a prime mover in Europe, and, and, and of course the Dutch founded Bilderberg, Prince Bernhard, literally coming over to talk to the press for 20 minutes and answering a lot of our questions. And you notice I brought up one of Estelin's internal points that his source, they're going to be discussing the NSA and the spy grid, uh, noticed that he said, oh yes, that meeting's coming up now. So the truth is they've got all these governments and industry heads in there to agree with each other. The set policy... Bilderberg has bragged about that just a week and a half ago in the German paper by name, one of the members. So we have Ed Balls because he's violating as the deputy prime minister of England, the shadow uh, prime minister, as they call him. 
he's violating their law. Our politicians are violating the Logan Act. Hillary got fined for this back in 96. They need to get in trouble. This information needs to come out. And look how far we've come, David Knight, from no coverage of Bilderberg a decade ago in mainstream media to now it's all over U.S. news. It's a major issue. DrudgeReport.com helped break that Berlin Wall. Uh, covering our stuff the last six years, carrying our Bilderberg coverage. The U.S. was the last place to ever report on this. They would make fun of it and go, Alex Jones and uh, other nuts believe there's something called a Bilderberg group with elites meeting to take over. No, no, they already took over most of the world. Now they're trying to put smart meters in my house and gouge me. Now they want my car to drive itself and tax me. Now they say my kids belong to them. Now they want the pension funds. Now they want to take the veterans' pensions. And, and again, it's not like it's even mismanagement they want to take them. They openly want to take them to make people poor under Agenda 21. And Bilderberg doesn't run at all. It's one of their key meeting conferences where they are at. And then they go, and the same people that run Bilderberg run Trilateral, and they run the other major groups in other countries, like the Royal Institute of International Affairs. The, everyone in Bilderberg, all the major members, the, the, the steadfast members, not the guests that come, the 20 or 30 each year, but the 115 or so longtime members, all of them head up and chair other governmental and non-governmental organizations and corporate groups on record and then line their pockets with trillions. They've been caught over and over again. We, we listed the Lockheed, Defense Department scams, all of it. And people keep asking, are they setting policy? Does it violate this and that law? Yes, of course it does. You know, did General Shinseki know they were falsifying reports nationwide that troops had gotten treatment they hadn't? Yes, that's a top-down order like Fast and Furious. So that's the issue. You're not covering it up anymore. We're going to point at the illegitimate corporate fascist government that in the words of Congressman Larry McDonald is super capitalist, merging with communism, controlled by a very few. China is their model. China is their dream world where everybody's a slave except one tenth of one tenth of a percent who are billionaires and live in armored compounds and eat organic food. How is it that billionaire Chinese generals run a communist country? Because it's not. It's Bilderberg government. That's what it is, and I don't want to live under it. These are the people that run our politicians that want our guns. David Knight, the, that's the issue, and this is a huge victory. I wouldn't let them get you off balance, diverting off into police and stuff. Uh, I, uh, go ahead. No, no, no. That's what, what I was – the point I no, was making No, I know you were. Was, you were. You were saying that. I understand. Yeah. What they're doing is the media, of course, is not covering the substance of Bilderberg or asking any questions about the expense of Bilderberg. No, no. Instead, what they do is they focus on us because we're the only media here. There's not that many uh, protesters, so instead of focusing on a crazy protester, they talk about that. But the thing with Ed Balls, now he's the shadow chancellor of the Exchequer, but the actual chancellor of the Exchequer, George Osborne, is here. And that's essentially equivalent to the Treasury Secretary in the U.S. So this is the person who the bankers want to interface with. This is the financial person. And it's all about what the bankers are doing with everyone. And as we saw, the, the tremendous amount of uh, paperwork that he had there, again, Martha Stewart was made a uh, poster child for insider trading. And yet our own congressmen are trading as insider trading, and yet, Nothing happens with that. When people noticed it, made a stink about it, they put a law out, and before the law took effect, they eviscerated that law. So they still are doing insider trading. Nobody's paying attention to it. They thought it was a, it was a scandal that was a blip on the radar. They passed some legislation that really wasn't effective. They then took even that away, and everybody thinks, well, it, it's done, it's finished. This is what we're talking about with insider trading. This is where the politicians are meeting in secret with these people. And whether or not this, this fellow that, that came out and was, was uh, transparent enough to talk to us and candid to talk to us, whether or not he's been involved in that, uh, whether or not they're not, I'm sure they're not doing that in the No, he's group. a rising he's star, a now runs their parliament. Of course, he's yeah. the type they're going to bring in because he can end up being the main leader yeah. of the country. Now, now, let's expand on this, though, David. Because when we come back, I want to break down more of what we're learning about their secret agenda from Estelin. We've also been able to confirm. We have an article coming out on that today. Uh, but but uh, you guys have done an incredible job, and everybody else in the media, the real media, has. Because, look, Bilderberg members never come over and talk to people, especially during the conference. This is a big deal, and it shows that they know ignoring us isn't working anymore.
No, it's not. No, they've tried to do more transparency. Last year, I think they uh, released, I, maybe it was, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was the first time they had released a, an official list of attendees that was done after the event. This year, they did an official list of attendees before the event. They acknowledged that they were having it before the event here. So they have tried to be a little... That's right, that's right. His Skype cut out. We'll be back with David Knight and Paul Watson's coming up. we got a bunch of clips they haven't played yet. I tend to get pretty wound up when I'm watching my reporters, my great reporters, our great reporters, your reporters. We're all part of the info war if we're against the globalist. Out there in the streets and Bilderberg guys are popping up and the police are popping up. And I'm like a dog running around a butcher shop not knowing which filet mignon or Chateaubriand uh, or, or, you know, cutlet I want because there's just so much going on. It's such a target-rich environment. And then just as David said, they're trying to distract off into me going, look at that. The police drag a guy behind the fence. Clearly, you're stomping on him and hitting him. And then they chase another reporter away. We need to know where that guy went. Now, it turns out that guy was yelling and screaming at people and stirring stuff up and getting in our face and saying horrible things about me, which makes it kind of comical in a way that the cops came over to grab somebody and take them and it looks like beat them up because they were messing with our reporters but still maybe he resisted them or something behind the thing it just it doesn't look good to have the cops i don't want to be drugged behind a curtain and then and then you see through a six inch gap them stomping and hitting him uh and and even if somebody's yelling and screaming and getting in my face the cops should tell them back off don't get in a fight and then if we do it again arrest them and I guess if he resists, I guess beat him up. I mean, I, you know, I, I, so I mean, if we're wrong, we apologize to the police. We'd already said that the police overall were being pretty good other than messing with our reporters a few times and wanting their IDs and stuff. But compared to a lot of police around the world, I mean, it, 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 you know, they're pretty good. And then I saw that scene, and all I was seeing was that scene. It looked pretty bad to me. And later I said, well, maybe it's not that bad. But not because the, the, the guy was messing with us and the police did this. But because I learned that some said he might have been resisting. Still doesn't look good to me when they chase the other reporter away that's trying to get footage. I think that's where the police go into the wrong. Does it mean they're monsters? No, I don't think so. Okay? Somebody's yelling and screaming at you and shoving on you. You want to punch them in the face. I get it. The point is, is that, is that the police need to be at a higher standard, ladies and gentlemen, or we turn into North Korea. Okay, now I'm saying let's not get distracted by that. Now we're spending all day on it. The point is, is that the media, the story is they are trying to change the subject to that because what can they do? We've defeated them. Here's the Bilderberg Group. We're going to continue to expose it. Now it's going to look at all the other influence peddling, all the other secret meetings, and all the other stuff that's going on. I mean, we've got Ed Balls. We'll show the video if you're a TV viewer. You go to infowars.com forward slash show, see the free feed. We've, uh, you see a big uh, all-seeing eye pyramid on the site? Uh, and people are like, what is this, Illuminati? Oh, my God. Yeah, yes, folks, we're programming you for the Illuminati. No. It's only a minority of folks saying that. It's the Bilderberg coverage. Just like Drudge has a pyramid on there symbolizing the elite at the top for the Bilderberg coverage. We have it as the Bilderberg coverage. It's just an icon associated with the New World Order. It says New World Order on the dollar bill under the all-seeing eye. You go there, that's the Bilderberg coverage page where we bowl down a lot of it. But there's also breaking news on the front page. We've got two big reports coming out later today with the secret agenda we've gotten that we've confirmed. This is big. And on the, the, the fact that they're definitely setting policy inside of there. David, other points and other reports you're about to file, other things that you've seen unfold since we talked yesterday. Well, Alex, uh, you know, just briefly touching on that, my, my point was, was that the guy who came down here and talked to us was a political consultant. And so I would expect that he would be covering Bilderberg, but instead he tried to make the story about us. That was the point I was trying to make, as well as the fact that, that I do have a report where I address what happened. I saw some additional footage of, of the arrest over here, and there were some elements there that I have seen in the, in the U.S. once the person is on the ground, subdued, uh, you know, the cops basically standing on them with a knee in the back, that type of thing.
I, you know, I just have zero tolerance for that kind of abuse. And as you said, the police need to be held to a higher standard. I understand when they get physical with somebody, they start to get into that. But uh, what's happening here, of course, they are coming, periodically coming out here on the terrace. And that's where we've been able to get some pictures of uh, conference attendees. We actually got a picture of uh, Eric Schmidt eating earlier. And so now we know that he has not made the singularity jump yet to a robotic body. But uh, that's an important thing to know. It's not there yet. You know, they're still sticking to their 2025 uh, schedule, I guess. And we also saw them on the phone, presumably an Android. But uh, <laughs> they're, they're coming out in, in such tight quarters because I think they did put some limitations on them, you know, in, in a town like this that's crowded, even though this area is, is kind of sparsely populated. It is a seaside area, and they were meeting on a day. Yesterday was a national holiday here in Denmark. So I think that wound up having these barricades fairly close. And so as they walk out on these terraces, it's the only place that they can go to get outside the hotel. We can photograph them. As they come out and go jogging, we can photograph them. That's why we've been able to get the kind of pictorial coverage that we have. But that's pretty unprecedented for somebody to well, come David, out. Well, David, I've got to say, this is one of the most successful years for Bilderberg coverage ever. Is Watson there with you right now? Yes, he is. Good. I want to come Hi, back Paul. and finish up with you, David, and then I want to talk to Paul. Uh, and, and get all the developments he's been saying. I know he's been working on some other stories. We're on the march. This is big, folks. The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the and by GCN pointing out it's Radio big, it's Network. The end of them. You see, they, they don't want you to know they exist. They want to hide. You know, I don't engage in Monty Python-style humor or gutter humor, but we had a big double on Tondra earlier talking about Ed Balls. It was all say, get the clips ready. Get the Obama clips ready. Get the Bush clips ready. I go, get both of the clips of Ed ready. <laughs> it was a big joke in there uh, in the studio. But while we're trying to get Paul Watson and David Knight's Skype reconnected, it's almost like it's being jammed. It just won't connect. It's either totally clear or it won't connect. Uh, while we're trying to line that up to Copenhagen, if not, just, just go to phone in about five minutes. Uh, default to phone. Let them know that if it's not working. He is the shadow chancellor of the exchequer and there if it's just parliamentary power sharing you can have multiple you know basically members that are over it but he's also when i was there in england they were calling him the shadow prime minister because he does a lot of work in his party with david cameron the prime minister but the point is he's coming in with big giant files and the police are wanting to see his id and he does look like a really sneaky crazy person in person I mean, uh, he looks okay on TV. When I saw him in person at the BBC studio, when I went in to be on TV next, he was coming off. We have that clip coming up in a moment. He, uh, you know, did, did look like, he didn't look as distinguished as some of the other globalists. So I think that's why the police didn't believe anything he was saying and made him just show a whole bunch of forms of ID uh, and make phone calls with his assistant on top of everything else, which I'm sure is an elitist uh, he didn't like happening. Uh, but that footage of those files, he needs to say what was in those files. Because you notice the Guardian reporter was talking to him earlier, talking to a Bilderberg group member that came over and was talking to our people through the fence, unprecedented, as they realized their cover's blown. The, the leader of the major labor party and the leader of the parliament uh, in the Netherlands, uh, in the um, Dutch Federation, she was bringing up you're setting policy in there. And he said, yes, we are setting policy. We, we are discussing policy in there. And that's illegal in most countries. So they've always, oh, no, no. All these billionaires and royalty and people meet in secret and do all this. Because we're discussing our golf swing and we play golf on Sunday afternoon after the three-day conference is over. And then we leave on Monday. And, you know, nothing's going on at the event. So let's go to the clip. Uh, here I am uh, asking Balls about what they're doing at Bilderberg. And then we've got Watson when he leaves out in the hallway. Watson gets him again. So here is that clip from last year in London. Can I shake your hand? Mr. Balls, can I shake your hand? Okay. Hey, I'm Alex Jones. I kind of like led the demonstrations. No, 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 no. Good to see you. Why can't you guys talk about Bilderberg? The, um, the, uh, 
the rules of these things are all decided by um, people um, who have been there for a long time. I mean, it is a corporate world government. I'm going to, I need to, to get you to sit down if that's all right. Thank, all right. Thank, thank you. you. Yep. There you go, talking to the Bilderberg. Uh, <laughs> oh, it doesn't exist. Do we have a sting going into this or not? <laughs> There goes the Bilderberg, individual. All right, there I am. Now let's go to the next video clip. As Balls walks out, we get him twice. Watson hits him. I mean... Hi, Ed. I'm Paul. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, how are you? What did you talk about? Bilderberg then? Yeah, 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 yeah. come on. Breaking yeah, your ministerial you code. <laughs> Give us a word, Ed. Please. Breaking the ministerial code? Yeah. I'm not a... Meeting with secret private I'm, meetings. I'm not a minister. Yeah, but you meet, you're conspiring with private individuals. Oh, I'm going to do a Freedom of Information Act request. Who did you meet with then? Eric Schmidt. Don't be silly. What do you think of Alex Jones? <laughs> Don't be silly. Breaking I mean, the ministerial this is just code. Ridiculous. So again, the last thing they want is their private secret meetings becoming uh, an event, a paparazzi. Because see, then people won't care about whatever her name is, baby, Kim Kardashian's baby. They will start caring again, like we did 100 years ago, about the robber barons. And what are they up to? And how are they trying to get tax money? There's high-def video that our crew got. David Knight, uh, Josh Owens, Paul Watson, uh, Karen Knight, just an incredible job and a crew uh, out there, uh, I tell you, we should be absolutely ecstatic. And I don't say this most years. I said it last year and the year before because it's getting better and better. David, do you, do you think I'm being too optimistic? But uh, Or is this really a big victory uh, that a Bilderberg group came over and talked to you, member, that we're getting all this high-def footage, uh, that it's all over the news, that a lot of even U.S. publications are saying, yeah, this looks pretty serious. Why isn't this being covered? I mean, they're going now from ignoring it to laughing at us and admitting it's real to not laughing at us. Only a few publications called us people that believe in space aliens and lizards. I think the Evening Standard did that. Uh, now, sure, the Dutch media is trying to distract off into, are we reporting on the police accurate? That doesn't matter. The elephant in the room, as you're saying, is this global governance meeting. That's right, Alex. And, you know, I'm glad that he came out and talked to us. And, of course, he's a politician. He's a leader of a major party, perhaps. Uh, the majority party in Holland, I'm not sure what they are, Netherlands, I'm not sure what the, the uh, politics are there. But the interesting thing to me is that the mayor of Atlanta is here. Now, you know, I understand why the, the, the leader of the Labor Party in the Netherlands is here. I don't understand why the mayor of Atlanta is here. What is he an expert on? This well, is, he's uh, major presidential Thomas material. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. He, he, he made, made uh -huh. also only Atlanta and Austin and one other city. I forget which one. I, I was reading like a, uh, I think a Wall Street Journal article a few months ago, halfway, and it was describing that Austin, Atlanta, and only one other city are known as mega growth cities where a lot of money's being made in real estate, you name it. And the elite like investments, just like the year before they did the pump and dump with um, Facebook. They had Zuckerberg there, and then he's not been there the other years, you know, to decide how they all got into the $100 billion scam which was an admitted pump and dump. So it's the same thing over and over again. I mean, they're probably running Bitcoin. You know, the point is they're in there as businessmen running, getting all the inside intel and deciding things. That's why I think they've got the mayor there because he's an up and comer and they want to get preferential treatment uh, with their projects uh, in Atlanta. Go ahead. Yeah, exactly. I, I hope as he's a politician, maybe he would want to have the transparency to come out here and talk to us. And, and we could ask him, is he auditioning to be a puppet president or is it that he's handing them some sweet deals on uh, real estate that they can pick up in uh, Atlanta, a growth city? That's a good point, Alex. Exactly. <laughs> and, and expanding on that, David Knight, again, at Copenhagen, Denmark, covering Bilderberg 2014. They always do things that cover a bunch of bases. And it just popped in my head. Atlanta is in the North American Treaty Agreement under spec the the preliminary agreed upon capital of the north american union and they're looking at it perhaps being the new main global capital uh even above new york or, or uh, tokyo or london and so i know that as well that, that atlanta they think is very special for a bunch of reasons
I, I didn't know that, but uh, yeah, it's, it's even fairly close to the Georgia Guidestones too, I guess. <laughs> they can go there and, and uh, have an outing and uh, worship their, their plan to depopulate the world. Well, also, they are pretty racist and anti-Africa and destroying Africa and destabilizing it on record. And Prince Bernhard got caught with World Wildlife Fund fronts that he ran, using it as a front to hunt animals uh, and, 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 and sell that you can make hundreds of millions off of, sell their tusk and things, and for diamond running and money laundering. Remember, he got caught not just in the Lockheed scandal, the king of, uh, well, he was married to the queen, so he's the prince, uh, the German uh, uh, prince, uh, who the, the SS officer she married. Um, so I'm sure he got ADL awards. I don't know if he did, but most Nazis actually get them like, like George Soros, but that's a side issue. Uh, they probably, again, for political correctness now, because they know they're being watched. Oh, this guy could end up being president. He's in Atlanta. He's black. Let's bring him. I, I think that's part of it too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm interested to talk to some of the people here in Denmark, and actually I was able to find a place where there were a lot of people, because around here it's very sparsely populated. As you saw the first report we did, you ask, is this the Omega Man movie, because the streets were totally deserted. Uh, but we did find a place where there's a lot of people, like a shopping zone or whatever, tourist zone. So I do want to ask them some questions about their take on the euro, and uh, as well as the EU. I know they don't like the euro. They rejected it, even though they hopped into the European Union at a fair Early, early date. And hey, if Karen ever wants your, your wife's doing photography for us, she's got some of the great photos of some of these globalists. The folks will find it. Real Alex Jones on Twitter and Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.com. Uh, we've got some big master coverage articles, again, boiling all this down coming out later this afternoon. But, but if she wants to pop in later or, or, or do some YouTube reports giving her perspective on what she's seen, and uh, we, we would love to talk to her. David Knight, we'll get more updates for you tonight on the Nightly News and throughout the weekend. And then obviously next week, you're going to be co-hosting in studio at least three of the five days. I told him to tell you this a few days ago, if you're able to do it, then you can take off the next week if you want. You've been working really hard. Uh, but if not, uh, I will uh, uh, see you uh, back here sometime the week after that. My only concern is the uh, flights. It was, such, it was such a Keystone Cop thing coming out here, but with the uh, weather cancellations and then the, and the other cancellations missing our flights having our luggage lost i mean it was it was a pretty amazing trip out here hopefully it'll be more normal when we go back it I'll must be, back be nice uh, for the guys that don't have to go through tsa all those elitists on their wide body private jets uh with their uh top of the line hookers uh taxpayer paid for in most cases must be fun for them to not have to go through all that yeah, but you know, Alex, remember when we went through that uh, turnstile the other day? I mean, we were immediately into uh, metal detectors and, you know, put your bags over here to be checked. So uh, maybe they have a, a walk around for the attendees and maybe that's just for the hotel staff. I don't know what that was, but I was surprised to see that at a Bilderberg meeting when we first walked in there. Unprecedented. Right the but again, amazing. we're blowing yeah. the shadow government wide open. We're going to get Paul Watson on now. Thank you very much, David Knight. Okay. All right. And again, Paul. folks, so many different uh, angles of this. He's going to uh, get set up with uh, Paul Watson now, but it's a big deal. I know I keep saying that. They don't want us to think of it as a big deal. That's the main talking point. There is a corporatist world government. If you go to the front page of Infowars.com, you'll see one of the great graphics our crew put together, and it says Bilderberg 2014. The drive of the Rockefellers and their allies is to create a one world government combining super capitalism and communism under the same tent, all under their control. Congressman Larry P. McDonald, who was a Democrat, who was a libertarian, who was super good looking, super smart, super patriot. They were so scared of him. He was going to be president, folks. And they had his plane forced down by the Russians in North Korea. And the word is they tortured the hell out of everybody on that plane. They stopped the plane in the, uh, what was it, in Alaska and got the Speaker of the House and everybody else off. He's like, what's going on? You just go on. You just, you go just, you just head on to your mission to Asia. And uh, they were so, he was that leader of the John Birch Society. I mean, on every front, Larry P. McDonald, ladies and gentlemen, was beyond Ron Paul. Because Ron Paul's smart, a statesman, great, but not really a fiery speaker. And, and he, He's a great speaker and, and a statesman and, and, and more of a Gandalfian type guy. Uh, but when you look at the archetype of, of, of Larry P. McDonald, I would have loved to have gotten to meet somebody like that. I mean, you could just tell he was the real deal, cared about this country, was a hard charger, 
was calling him out. You can see a Larry P. McDonald debate about the CFR on uh, Hardball. We ought to air that sometime from the 80s. I mean, it's just amazing how on his feet he was, how well-spoken. And they, they killed him. And the word is, word is they kept him alive quite a while. They did not like him. So uh, he's just a hero. They, 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 they got him, folks. They, they really tortured the hell out of that guy from the intel I've got. And um, they wanted to know, because, again, he had a plan with a lot of other patriots uh, there are patriots in the establishment. There are people that don't want to turn the world over to pure evil. He was known for his staunch opposition to communism and believed in long-standing covert efforts by the Trilateral Commission and other powerful groups to bring about socialism and world government. He was the second president of the John Birch Society and also a cousin to George S. Patton. And they also killed Patton. I've interviewed the guy, that uh, the hitman that killed him, and, and the author, and uh, it's what the military all said happened. They shot him with a big high-powered air gun with a big uh, slug in it, so it wouldn't even wouldn't even penetrate him. It would just break his neck. Shot him right in the you know wrecked a train, parked a car in front of it, shot him, and he still held on. So they went in and poisoned him to death because he didn't want to you know build up the Soviet Union. It's just it never ends. Of course, the family knew about that. Let's go to Paul Joseph Watson. Paul, uh, thank you for joining us from Bilderberg 2014. What uh, do you take away from what's happening and what you've witnessed? Hi, Alex. Good to be back. Um, the first thing to mention is obviously the footage we got last night, what well, we uploaded last night, got the article out this morning, which was the shadow chancellor uh, of Great Britain, Ed Balls, who, of course, we confronted last year in Watford in England. He was denied entry to Bilderberg. Now, actually, this has generated a lot of media attention. London Guardian Independent have picked up our video. He didn't have his credentials. He couldn't get into the meeting. So he was stood there uh, talking to police for several minutes while they uh, tried to check his credentials. What was interesting to me, of course, is he had this giant bag full of files, thick files, literally, you know, two dozen files. So... To say that Bilderberg is a mere talking shop, as much of the mainstream media still does. And it's does. clearly some type of ah. voting agenda package for the heads of committees. I'll, I bet my right arm it's heads of committees voting packages for corporate minutes where they make decisions in a corporate boardroom. It's an illegal, shadow, criminal corporate boardroom. And they brag out of the other side of their mouth that that is what they do. Go ahead, Walt Paul. Well, he's obviously giving some kind of presentation. And the Chancellor of the Exchequer, George Osborne, is also there, his so-called opposite in the Conservative Party. So they're scheming together when they're supposedly on opposite sides of the political fence. So we got that video up. It's since been picked up by The Guardian, The Independent, and others. Um, that was a major coup. Of course, then we were down here in the afternoon when some of the Bilderberg members were coming out after their first conference in the morning we got Etienne Davignon, uh, we got James Wolfenson, uh, Google CEO, CEO Eric Schmidt. Um, they didn't stay out for long. They obviously knew we were here. They kind of moved away from us when we when they saw us. They turned away from us, moved further back up. So um, obviously, as you probably know now, there's a huge group of them right outside schmoozing into the evening hours. Well, I would like to continue into the next hour, then get an update from you guys at the bottom of the hour. Uh, if you're still able, who got that great HD of Schmidt and all them sitting around with world leaders, uh, obviously drinking and making decisions, because that is just amazing footage. Uh, and I want to get some more of that. I, I know we sent some telephoto lenses. How, how are you guys uh, able to get this? I can see I can see Wolftonson over there smoking a cigar. Uh, I, I mean, th that is... Yeah, with Etienne Davignon. Isn't that the head of he Fiat? Isn't that the head of Fiat right there who's, who's getting Jeep, uh, putting his jacket on? Go ahead, sorry. The, the guy stood up behind Wolfenson is Etienne Davignon. Of course, he was the guy who bragged in 1999 that uh, the euro single currency was a brainchild of Bilderberg. Yeah, yeah, that's the former head of the Bilderberg that. group. Well, we're going to come right back. Just stay there. Amazing. All right, Paul Watson is our guest. Uh, I'm going to have them try to go over the next 20, 30 minutes, get more IDF footage of the meeting. That, that, that is powerful information. We're exposing the true shadow controllers, they want us fighting with each other over religion, sex, region, while they, the globalists, meet and steal literally trillions a year in banker bailouts, exempt themselves from regulation, 
That's what's really going on in these operations. We're going back to Paul Watson with other observations and points that he's uh, made. Paul Joseph Watson. Yeah, there was another incident while we were down here filming uh, over in the protest area. I know a, a, a delegate came out earlier on the show to talk to us, but there was a, a separate delegate, a Dutch politician, who came out of the Bilderberg Group meeting and went to, over to talk to the protesters. We were weren't there julia was there so you should probably get her on after the next segment or whatever and it was a it was a kind of olive branch as far as i understand it but the oh, guy listen, dietrich smoked. sampson is the leader of the labor party we were able to get in on that yeah. unless it was another dutch one and and and, and yeah they're basically st starting to mainline themselves was it somebody other than dietrich sampson that that's unprecedented no, it was it was the same guy but it was in a different area. He went out to the protest camp and started speaking to those people. So wow. he's definitely been dispatched to for public relations purposes by the sounds of it. Very interesting. Um, again, Paul, I've been interrupting. Other points that are important. Um, well, we've just been going back and forth from here to the hotel, basically uploading the videos, getting the articles out. Tomorrow is going to be interesting because... Obviously, there are no conferences, no meetings inside the hotel as far as we know it on Saturday, or at least very few. So they could go on a little walkabout, which might be might present some options. So uh, we're looking forward to that. Tomorrow could be very interesting. Absolutely. Tomorrow we've got to hunt them in the First Amendment in free speech, and but we will be hunting them to try to get the questions. You know, we'll probably only get one or two questions. The best tactic is to say, hi, Eric Schmidt, or oh, are you with the conference? And get their hand, reach out, get their hand, yeah. and once you've got their hand, don't let go of it. <laughs> well, that's what I did with Ed Balls last year. I was like, hey, Ed, nice to meet you, rather than just going in, you know, confrontational from the off, because... You know, I want to talk to them. I want to hear what they've got to say. You know, if you go into aggressive, they'll just immediately back away. And, you know, we're not aggressive. We're just trying to get information, trying to talk to them. But in terms of media coverage, um, it's, it's gone from a trickle to starting to become a deluge. A lot of reports, many of which are quite straight and positive, a few of which are just horrible. I mean, there was a, a Telegraph article which was just full of errors. For example, they said that Bilderberg peaked in terms of the protest before 9-11. Before 9-11, there was nobody at Bilderberg. There was Jim Tucker and maybe a couple of other journalists. Yeah, we had like 4,000. It, it peaked last year unless it keeps really growing. But, but it, there's hardly anybody this time just because it's hard to get there and expensive. Uh, I mean, they made a big mistake doing it north of London. I'd say, what, 4,000 max at one time? I mean, that's unprecedented. Oh, it was absolutely huge. I mean, compared to this year, the numbers are minimal. I guess it's going to be bigger tomorrow. But, you know, obviously you were a big draw, Ike was a big draw. But there was another article in The Week, which is quite a big publication in the UK, and they were very keen to make the point that Osama bin Laden and Timothy McVeigh also believe that the Bilderberg Group has power. So it's not the fact that you've got Bilderberg Group members admitting that they've got power. You know, the, the big German magazine publication. No, no, you're a terrorist if you say that. I want to come back to you. Stay there. I bet maybe we're all evil. I mean... This is I don't DCA, believe in Santa Claus. Genesis I do believe in uh, that I built my network. business. Paul Watson just continues to drop bombshell after bombshell on us. He was getting into the German magazine newspaper, big one, last week. I forget the name. He wrote an article about it. Uh, talking to one of the members saying, yeah, we basically run things. Yeah, we're, we're, we're one of the most powerful groups. We just talked to the Dutch leader of the parliament and the leader of the Labour Party. Uh, and he admitted they're in their setting policy. That, that that clip needs to get put in an article that I know that some of the crews working on in there are pointing out that they're setting policy and, and the files and the rest of it. But it's just confirmed. Dietrich Sampson confirms they're setting policy, discussing policy. That's illegal in all these countries. I don't know about the Netherlands, but most of them it is. The U.S., England, Germany, we've checked into those. So Logan Act, uh, Official Meetings Act, all these things. Paul, for me, this is the big issue. I know we can look at the media saying we're terrorists and, you know, bin Laden believed in Bilderberg, so we're, we're, we're with bin Laden when he was CIA. But, I mean, other than looking at media tactics, establishment media tactics, th 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 they're imploded. Uh, what do you think the biggest issue is this year? And would you say Bilderberg has peaked in coverage? Because I think we're getting more coverage this year than we got last year. We had much bigger crowds last year. But I think it's only getting bigger and bigger. And so I think the announcement that 
you know, 12 years ago it peaked is, is like saying the moon's made of cheese. Well, it's just factually inaccurate. I mean, there were no protesters whatsoever outside Bilderberg 12 years ago. And then the rest of it was just, oh, world power is dispersed. It's moving over to the east. Just a litany of, of BS, basically. They failed to mention, of course, that they created the euro. They were positioning themselves for the 2008 financial collapse two years before. Kingmakers in terms of Clinton, Blair, the 12 NATO secretary generals, Every single one of them has been a Bilderberg member, and many of them were selected by Bilderberg before they became the head of NATO. So as long as the mainstream media can avoid mentioning the actual facts that are confirmed, that prove they have power, that prove they have influence, then they can continue to get away with it. I think that some kind of directive must have been issued to mention either 12-foot shape-shifting lizards or tinfoil hats in the first paragraphs of these articles, because... Almost every single one that's the debunking piece mentions those two buzzwords. So again, it's using this pejorative term conspiracy theory when this is conspiracy fact. Not We're not saying that. Uh, we have the documents proving it, but they're saying it. They come out and admit it. Willie Klass, an, another NATO Secretary General, came out in 2010 in a Belgian radio interview. And he said, yes, we have power. We go in there. We set the consensus. Then it's up to us. It's our mission to implement that consensus, that agreement, in our relative spheres of influence. So numerous Bilderberg members, prominent ones, including Etienne Davignon on the steering committee, have admitted they, that they set the consensus, they set the policy, and it's broadcast out amongst them. Of course, they have people that they groom as well. The, the mayor of Atlanta's there. So, you know, is he Barack Obama 2.0 in, in eight years or so after they... And will he you know, groom... Queen Beatrice's stool. <laughs> well, we've got Queen Sophia of Spain. Uh, I tweeted that out about an hour ago. So actually, that was uh, Skelton that got that one. Is that on Obviously your tweeting or on my tweeting? No, it's on, it's on real Alex Jones tweety pie. We got um, Petraeus on his jog as well. Uh, Peter Thiel. That's another interesting one because, of, of course, he... he put two million dollars into bitcoin i think teal is here to explain bitcoin to henry Kissinger. i knew it i knew that, it that's a very difficult task <laughs> to explain bitcoin to henry kissinger so you know a lot of people Did you just that coin a, a term tweety pie tweety pie yeah <laughs> <laughs> but um that's kind of racist i think it's, it's, it's got to be one of the it's got to be racist or sexist but okay. yeah they're trying to um, they're trying to control Bitcoin. I think that's why Peter uh, Thiel. You got is there. more to say, and then I don't want to get any final comments from David. And then I'm going to take phone calls on any subject you want, folks. And then the, the guys are going to run over and get some more footage of the bivouac uh, globalists. We ought to go do a live feed right in front of where they're at drinking. One big thing we've gotten out of one of the most powerful globalist meetings in the world, the very apex of control, Bilderberg 2014 in Copenhagen, Denmark, is that they're very mad at Obama. They thought he would literally be able to get more done. And they're talking about what are they going to do with him? And you notice they just had the head of the VA step down. Jay Carney is resigning right now, giving a teleconference, press conference. And so they're throwing a bunch of rats overboard so that it looks like Obama, you know, is blaming all these people that are falling on the sword. It's not going to work. DrudgeReport.com is the headline, Obama cleans house. Another headline I noticed, record 13 or 3,100 days, 3,100 days since major hurricane strikes USA. <laughs> and yeah, they said that last year. New hurricane season is about to start. Record low hurricanes for like four years. Lowest level of tornadoes since 1960. Noah admitted that in their computer model. And then I'm on shows, Democrat shows, and they'll go, Jones, you know there's more hurricanes and tornadoes. And I'm like, no, it's not. They're at record low. Oh, yeah? Got any other conspiracy theories? No, I mean, it's just, it, it's just people just, just literally wallow in their ignorance nowadays. Finishing up with Paul Watson, they've moved over to a fellow that's got a bullhorn. The crowd, that's, and I guess there's a crowd of protesters now showing up, wants to get my view on it. And I guess I can bullhorn the globalist uh, from a distance if they're somehow able to rig up the thing to a microphone or, or, or send the Skype down. I don't know if there's a way to do it. I've done this before.
It's like having my hologram there to do it. Uh, but uh, if they can figure it out, I'd love to do it. Maybe we can just plug the earpiece directly into the jack on the megaphone. I, I, I don't know. I'm not there, obviously. I'm in FEMA Region 6, formerly Texas. Uh, but uh, Watson, uh, any other points before we uh, go to this uh, feed? And, and I guess they're having some really bad Skype issues right now. The uh, Mars rover is not doing too well. Hey, Paul Watson, can you hear me? Here. It's very fine. All right, Paul, any other points you want to make before we do this bullhorn um, stunt? Yeah, we should probably talk to Julia, who witnessed the uh, interaction with the Bilderberg member earlier in the protest pen. So it's like so the movie can... Aliens. Apparently she saw one. This is this is momentous. Yeah, we uh, can do that quickly now. Yeah. yeah, let's talk if to her. Want. Yeah, here we go. Hey, Julia. Quick, quick. Quick, quick, Paul Watson. Tell us, what, <laughs> tell us what you witnessed earlier over in the protest area. Watson is directing the women around. Addressing the protesters. Um, it was Deirdre Samsom, who's actually on the list, and he's Labour Party, Dutch Labour Party, and former uh, Greenpeace member. And he came out and stood in front of the Freedom Pen and spoke to the protesters. And I was walking by to go back to my room, and. The whole thing felt like he was trying to appease us or gauge the protesters for, you know, how they're feeling or what they think of the people inside the Bilderberg group. And the whole time, you know, people were asking, some people were asking him very interesting questions. Like there was uh, an ex-member uh, of the Ministry of Labor, uh, the Dutch Ministry of Labor, and he asked him about the Blackwater presence in Ukraine, and people were asking about health care and all this, and it was all misdirection. And all he kept talking about is these wonderful social policies that are being discussed inside and uh, how wonderful it is that the Dutch people are living longer and the health care system is great and um, the, how they're just discussing the future for our future and how they're trying to do their best for us with renewable energy. And he just, I, and then he also kept reiterating that this is not a private meeting, that it's public and him coming out is, you know, this de a demonstration of how public it is. And I said, then why do you guys sign non-disclosure agreements? And he just looked over at me. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Tell her, hold on. She's a genius. And I want to hear about her and where she's from. Uh, no, no, seriously, she is. She just realized it was hiding in plain view. They're coming out and talking to people, now claiming their meetings public because it's illegal in almost all those countries. I'm sure it's in all of them, but especially in Europe. Uh, but I don't know about the Netherlands specifically, so they want to now claim it's public and transparent because it really is super secret, and now they're worried about criminal investigations. So I think they're trying to now have it both ways and be able to argue in legalese that it's really a public meeting, but that's not going to hold water. She figured it out. Well, Watson, tell her that she is Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Alex says that you're Sherlock Holmes. The point he made was... They're worried about criminal investigations and transparency, so they're getting more desperate and having to address us more. What do you think about that? To be honest, I don't know. I, it felt like she was, maybe they said, oh, somebody go out there and talk to them. And the fact that he was talking to the kind of m the loud, more radical uh, pro uh, protesters within the pen, well, there were several people outside. Uh, talked to him directly. He didn't want to engage those people. And it felt like he was just trying to appease us and to go back and you know, declare uh, what we're thinking, what we're talking about, and what the little people are saying outside. It felt like a little, it felt like a game. He well, super But more than that, they want to go to the, they want to go to the wild people so that the mainstream media can shoot it and make us look bad and make them look good. That doesn't work anymore. Folks are angry. They're going to like the fact that the folks are angry. And that's why the media doesn't get its backfiring. They're coming from an elitist perspective and also a 50-year-old perspective. That It's like dinosaurs fighting star destroyers. They just don't have any hope. Uh, Paul Watson, uh, get her to tell us about herself. I think it's interesting to see where she's from, why she came out. I know she's been out there for two days. Uh, she's been with you guys. Uh, get her to tell us about herself. Uh, my name is Julia Transky, and I have a channel called Brave the World, and I guess that's what I'm doing here. And um, I'm from Toronto, and what's the most interesting thing to me 
and currently about the meeting is it's a little bit more narrow-minded than what you guys are doing, but I'm really into uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and all that, and Peter Thiel is here. And you said dinosaurs, and <laughs> there is this, like, antediluvian kind of presence here because there's such old people, and I think Peter Thiel is here to ex maybe explain Bitcoin to them and kind of give them an in on what they're having to deal with in terms of control. I don't know. He's supposed to be on our side. He's supposed to be the self-proclaimed libertarian. I'm very interested in that, and I don't know. I know... Um, I know that there is a, it's a very difficult thing to do to make these jumps in rationalizing what they're doing, what they're talking about, and why people sure, are there. Sure, because they sure, but listen, they listen, they know about fiat currencies, and they know about uh, derivatives and stuff. Believe me, their great-great-granddaddies wrote the book on, 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 on things like Bitcoin. And again, I'm not saying Bitcoin's purely bad. I just... And I know it's racing up right now and everybody's making all this money. I just know when the bubble implodes, if I promote it, I, I will be blamed for it. So, so that's why I've been a bit wary. But more power to people creating their own fiat currency because at least it competes with the globalists. I don't like the fact that they're the only ones that can make money off their Federal Reserve System. I think they're worried about it. I think that's why he's there. I mean, it's interesting to me. Um, I'm kind of more hopeful about that fact i think it's uh, a good sign that he's there and i think their ears are perked up about the possibility of sovereignty through currency for the people instead of money being power who controls money being power instead money being power in the hands of the people so that's that's my biggest interest here uh, this year well they're getting ready to get rid of a lot of world currencies and want a new fiat when they control they're looking at a global carbon tax to to underpin and give value to the new SDR system and and again when I send packages overseas it's it says SDR on the USPS so we're already under a global SDR they've said that at Davos hundred trillion dollars they want uh, of uh, the SDRs every decade of taxpayer money that's how much carbon tax they want uh, but uh, very interesting. Now, ask her if she has any other points, Watson, and then we'll, let's see if we can do this bullhorning, and then I'm going to take phone calls. Uh, well, I guess I'll end with, don't worry, Alex, they're talking about the future of renewable resources, and it's all for our own good, as Mr. Simpson said. All right, well, are you having fun? Are you glad you came to Bilderberg? Um, you know, I am, uh, but it's it's like a blanket of despotism here and it i really react to it in a negative way i had a nightmare the first night i was here and it involves me being taken captive at the marriott by these people and I, there's there's a really really sinister feeling that i'm not just imagining because i've i had i came here with no um no ideas and no expectations and it just the first day so you're picking up the creepy feeling. crawlies of david rockefeller or kissinger who do you think you're picking the creepy crawlies up from uh, maybe, yeah, maybe Kissinger. <laughs> he's quite a quite a troll, isn't he? You don't think he's 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 hot? <laughs> who, who do you like better, Paul Watson or Henry Kissinger? <laughs> oh, of course, Paul. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna stop being bad. I'm gonna quit. I'm gonna quit. Hey, it was nice to meet you. I appreciate that. Hey, tell folks your channel one more time. Uh, Brave the World channel. So if you go on YouTube, you can type that in, or you can go on BraveTheWorld.com. Thank All right, you. very interesting. I'll we'll check it out. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Okay, Watson, get more interviews with the other media and protesters. I think that's really important. Great job. It's just it, You guys are doing an exemplary job. I just get so excited about it. That's why I keep thanking you. Uh, do you guys want to do this bullhorning, Paul, after the break? Or do, you, do we think that'll technically work? No, we could walk over there and try that, definitely. All right, well, you guys fiddle with that during the break. I'll come back, do that. Then it's going to be open phones, free for all, any subjects you want out there. Thank you, Paul Watson. We're going to come back with a final segment with those guys. They'll have more in HD tonight on the Nightly News, working with the rest of the team in the back, getting all that HD footage they send over from Europe uh, you know, uh, via digital uh, downloads. And then we'll have it all for you tonight on the Nightly News. This entire operation, from the customer service to the writers to the crew running the radio show, that's the most stressful area to just the graphics people, everybody, the shipping department, this whole team to the janitor uh, are just wonderful people at the InfoWars operation. And thank you all for your support of InfoWars so, so that I could develop this great crew. I didn't plug anything last hour. Remember, this takes a lot of money. Visit InfoWarsLife.com before all the new products sell out. InfoWarsLife.com.
again, if you just joined us, I'm your host, Alex Jones. Obama has made Jay Carney the twit. The worst lie I've ever seen, fallen a sword. He is resigning. So is General Konsecki, the head of the Veterans Affairs. I mean, this has all been done by design. It's gotten much worse under Obama by design to cheat the veterans and steal the money set aside for their health care. And it's been ordered. It's not an accident. This is all a big diversion. It will continue on until we wake up to that. We take you now back to, to Copenhagen, and, and their Skype just died. We're going to reconnect with them. Here's the toll-free number to join us for the next segment. I'll go right to your calls. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. You agree with me. You disagree with me. You got a Bilderberg point. You want to talk about all the rats jumping off the Titanic that is Obama? 800-259-9231. And yes, Obama's a puppet. Yes, he's a front man. Yes, Michelle is. It doesn't matter. You have to destroy their graven image that they have got their whole agenda on, and then the next puppet, and the next puppet, and then say, this person's bad, and then there's these people behind it. That's how human communication works. That's how we defeat their operations. We expose their global warming thing as a global uh, taxing scam to control and regulate everything. We expose gun control as a way to disarm us and make us slaves under their authoritarianism while they armed to the teeth against us. Now, towns and cities, it's all over the news. Why are the police getting tanks? Why are they training to take on the Tea Party? Fire the police chief. I mean, it's happening. The state houses are coming out talking like me. And I'm not on a power trip about that, folks. I've studied history so because I was into history instead of comic books and stuff when I was a kid. It was more entertaining. I mean, I'd read, like, Time Life books on World War II and World War I and stuff and other things. And it was other kids like comic books. This was the real comic book. I mean, I wanted to learn more about Heinrich Himmler. I wanted to learn more about uh, Julius Caesar. I wanted to learn more about the Emperor Hirohito uh, of Japan. I wanted to learn about... Uh, British royalty. I wanted to learn about George Washington. And so when I saw what was happening in high school and college, I was like, this is history repeating. And they're like, nothing's happening. There's no corruption in government. There's no secret groups. There's no court intrigue. And I went, you're lying. And I said, I'm going to fight you. And here we are 19 years later. I'm 40 years old. I'm nobody. When I say we are setting the agenda more and more, it should show you that if you will just believe in yourself, learn how things work, stand up and get involved, you'll be incredibly successful in business. You'll be incredibly successful in life with everything. If you can just find good team members, because it's not enough for you to get your act together or, or for me to do that, to get your you-know-what together. There's another word that says it better. You've got to learn to get the proper family around you and the proper crew. Because it doesn't matter how smart you are or committed, you get the wrong people around you, they will bring you down every time. And, you know, sometimes you have relationships that are like time bombs that go on for decades and then get so bad, your loyalty is used against you and you're forced to cut people off and cut them out of your life. And as you get older, you learn to do that quicker and quicker. You can get too quick, too, though. But there's just all these predators out there, and I don't like them. We ever get their Skype back? Just got it back. Great job. Okay, let's go back to uh, Copenhagen. Sure, we'll full screen it. Again, I'm the director of my own show here. <laughs> Crew are just amazing. <laughs> it's just kind of like a train wreck sometimes, but that's good. It's real. In fact, maybe I shouldn't care sometimes people are being noisy or tromping around. I mean, this is real. We should probably put a microphone out there that just randomly folks can tune into. No, I'm joking. Okay, they're walking down right now. Uh, here, let's get some of the ambient noise on the street there at the capital city of Copenhagen uh, of Denmark. There it is. Nice cl classical architecture. Very genteel people, very clean. And what you see is the old Europe. It's pretty much dead on arrival. 1.2 children, 1.3 for every two adults, will not exist within 50 years. Gone. Gone, gone, gone. Gone to women, gone to drink. Gone. 
On the whiskey. What's that quote from the new True Grant? It's a pretty good movie. I do not have your hundred dollars. It's gone. Gone, gone to whiskey. Gone to women. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back. And before you know it, your life's going to be gone, gone, gone. You want to be a drone of these people that think they're human and you're not? Or you want to take your destiny in your hands? I know I'm a rebel spirit against these tyrants. You know, you may think the movie Halloween's scary. I think uh, the New World Order's scary, what they're doing. Acting all friendly and nice in their suits. While they figure out with corporations how to put stuff into all the major food linings to sterilize you and your family and give you horrible degenerative diseases. And then you can even find books they've written bragging about it. Well, they all sit around telling them, we don't exist. We don't exist. You do exist. And we're exposing you. All right, let's shift gears right now and go back to Paul Watson. Finally, before I go to calls there, and he's with a, a reporter who got photos of the Atlanta mayor there. Very exciting, Paul. And then maybe we can shove the camera through the fence. Where is this? You're able to get these shots of them outside uh, having cocktails, the uh, builder rats. Um, it's it's around the side of the Marriott. It's across from the night building. So it's just adjacent to the Marriott and, uh, next to the bridge next to the water so it's it's a really good spot they didn't allow us in there a couple of days ago but they've opened it up so we were able to get in there earlier and yeah as i said you know etienne d'avignon um wolfenson eric schmidt basically came out for a quick drink after their initial conference um and we were there pretty much for a few hours we got some good shots uh, got some video and then we got it up on the website and then we came back and obviously now there are more of them there um uh, having probably after dinner drinks well so. listen we can even do a little bit of overdrive five minutes or so get over there and show that i want to see a live feed of that that's amazing and uh, again, I figure they were blocking the main walkway that's public. That's why they had to probably open that. Because uh, I was marveling that they blocked the boardwalk for the whole city just because they felt like it. Because the royalty is there, literal royalty. Uh, who got the photo of the uh, queen? Was that uh, David Knight's wife? Queen of Spain? Queen, queen of Spain, that was Skelton. Um, Princess Good job. Beatrice. The former Queen of uh, Netherlands was out there earlier, so, yeah, we, we got quite a few. We got some good shots. And, and do you have that reporter with you that took the snapshot of uh, of the, uh, the Atlanta mayor? No, I don't know who that was. I wasn't around when that was happening, so. Oh, okay, I must have misunderstood. They popped my ear and said that they uh, had that person was able to be for an interview, but I must have misunderstood. Uh, now, Paul, uh, again, specifically, I want you guys to go over to that area, and you say there's more of them than there now. Uh, have we deposited one of our photographers over there, secreted someone there to be catching all this? We were just there earlier. We got we got tons of photos earlier. We were just broadcasting from there earlier. So that's where, where you were at? Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, I misunderstood. I, I, you're, I guess you're now in the protest pen then. Yeah. Okay, so I was saying go where you already were, so now you've gone to the other place. Okay, <laughs> what do you think you guys should go cover next? Um, in terms of tonight or tomorrow, do you mean, Alex? Well, the Bilderberg people are only going to get drunker. <laughs> and they follow their own rules, so they're out there smoking. So I would go nest out there, and I would I would get a night vision camera, and you're going to get a bonanza. Yeah, well, we, we've been there pretty much most of the day, really. We just Also, they there. don't let them bring hookers in. They're going to try to leave at night. And if you tail the Mercedes out of there, you could catch some really good stuff. That's something we did in Switzerland, I remember in 2011. <laughs> they weren't happy about that, but yeah, I mean if you're willing to go if you're willing to go in the gay bar, you can go in there and get some pretty good intel. <laughs> which I don't think it's a big deal. Go ahead and go in there, Paul. I mean it might no. be an S&M place or something, but I mean kiss, you know. We actually talked to somebody who was a gay escort back in 2011 who went to service some Bilderberg members only as bar staff obviously, then are up to nothing nothing untoward. But yeah, as I said, there's a potential of walkabouts happening tomorrow, so that's when we hope to catch some of them um, out of their protected bubble, out of their security bubble, so then we can really get some good some good conversations. Amazing, Paul. Yeah, and I mean, I, I wasn't joking when I said that. I wasn't just making a joke, and, and I was just saying statistically, uh, that's, uh, that's where if you follow some of them, you would uh, find them going for whatever reason. That would be newsworthy. But, but, you know, kind of morally, maybe we should leave them alone if they're going to visit hookers. You know what I mean? Isn't that their private business, Paul? Um, 
if, if they're hanging around the hotel, if they're going for jogs, they're going for walks, which I expect at least some of them to do. Of course, in Bilderberg, they were surrounded by a lot of security. But this year, it's like Petraeus, for example. He went outside of the protected area. He just basically ran along the main street in Copenhagen across the bridge. Um, so if, if more of them are going to do that, and that's going to be a good opportunity. No, no, to... no, I agree. I was just making the quasi joke about the prostitutes, but it really is true. My whole issue is that's not the type of intel we even want. We don't care uh, what, you know, shoe size somebody is or what their favorite, you know, dinner is or, or, you know, where they like to vacation or what their sexual issues are. What we want to know is from staff and people, as you know, what were they really discussing on the agenda? Well, we know, we know that they leaked the vague agenda, um, hoping to get some more tips and, you know, more specific stuff. And that sometimes that comes, sometimes it doesn't. But I'm, I'm just talking about just approaching them in a friendly manner, as, as we did last year with, sure, with Ed Sure, sure, I agree. Can, can you have uh, him uh, pan around, the camera guy, Josh, so we can see some of the uh, protesters that are there in the pen and uh, see what they're up to? And again, if you're a radio listener, I'll describe it. It looks like about 25, 30 protesters max that I've seen. Well, I guess there's some more, maybe, maybe 40. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15, 20. Gone home now. There were more earlier. But... Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, what would you say, about 40 people there now? Uh, yeah, probably about that. Maybe a bit less. But yeah, tomorrow's going to be the big day for protests, obviously. I mean... It's not, not going to be 2,000. I think that was wildly optimistic. but You know, I think it was well under. over 3,000 that were there for the big speech. That's what the cops said oh, yeah. in England. They couldn't get in. They were queuing around the block. I mean, that, that was wild. Hey, let me bring up this cop controversy, and then I want you to run back over there. I'm sorry we got our wires crossed. And with the camera, show me them out there eating uh, and drinking. I, I, I think the viewers would obviously want to see that. We have some of those videos yeah. up on Infowars.com, but as they gather, I want to stay on top of that. That's important. Uh, but... Going back to the police and this guy that was yelling at you and yelling at David and yelling about me, I mean, we make jokes about it, but they did drag him off and it looks like they're stomping on him and hitting him. Now, maybe maybe he hit them first, but they, were, they took him behind a screen. That's my issue. But, you know, now the media is acting like we're being too hard on the police, distracting off into that. My issue is then they chase another camera guy, not wanting him to film whatever they really did. I think that's wrong. Even if they beat the guy up, who was messing with our reporters, I, I still, I, we make jokes and say, oh, you know, that's just terrible. But no, seriously, I do have an issue with that. What is your real feeling on this? Because I'm told it's in the newspapers and on TV over there. Well, obviously this guy was harassing us for, for a good hour or two beforehand. And um, he, I think he tried to get back into the press area and the police stopped him. And he was very insistent on getting back in towards us. So he could, you know. Okay, I didn't understand that he'd been doing it for hours and had been already thrown out. Well, then I think he deserved to be arrested. I, I didn't know that. Because well, if he got a press back. area just for the press and then he did that, and then maybe he resisted them. So maybe well, maybe we're wrong. Then. Go they ahead. Released, they released him after about 15 minutes. And he was actually, he came back today and there was another incident which I got on camera where they grabbed him, but they, they didn't do anything with him. Did he look roughed up when you saw I him? Know. No. No. He, he, uh, I don't think he had many injuries. It, it may have been wrong to drag him off in that manner, but um, some of the police are on little ego trips, little power trips. Like I said with the guy, you can't stick your camera two inches through the through the metal fence when we're already, you know, 50 feet away from Bilderberg members. Um, most of them have been all right. Some of them are, are just on little power trips, and they like to enforce these ridiculous rules. So, you know, it's a mixed bag, as always, with the police. Um, and we'll see what happens in future when, you know, more people show up. Now, this guy went through a lot of trouble uh, to uh, attack us, so I think we should give him some airtime. I'm interested in what he's saying. What? Uh, repeat verbatim what he says about us. He was saying that we report that dinosaurs existed and that we're part of the conspiracy and that you're a cia agent basically alex jones is cia your response that's what he says over and over again i think he's a bit <laughs> unstable to be honest but turning into quite the character let me just be honest i'm far beyond cia folks okay let's just get that straight i work for a much higher power than that and, and it's called uh, God. And I'm not saying I'm on some sacred mission, but I really believe everything I'm saying. I love humanity. And I, I'm, I, I'm getting 
I, I'm getting spiritual directives. If you really get down to the, you know, in my gut, in my spirit, the media will run crazy with that. But no, I mean, I go with my conscience. And so I'm being directed by honor. Okay, I don't work for the CIA, folks. That's like working for Coca-Cola in Texas. Every third person is an asset of the CIA in this state. I'm literally swimming in CIA people. I mean, I am so sick of the movies. Like it's, ooh, CIA, ooh, ooh, ooh. I mean, I'm so tired of it, Watson. What about you? Who do you really work for, Watson? 12-foot shape-shifting reptoids, obviously. I mean, who wouldn't? <laughs> but... The other, the other thing is there's this allure to believe in really wild stuff that doesn't exist when there's so much good stuff we can prove. It's like there's still a lot of talk about this isn't the real site of the conference and that they're off meeting at some castle. You know, we've seen royalty arrive. We've seen NATO heads arrive. We've seen them right now out there drinking, talking. So we know they're here. Same speculation last year, but we saw them all coming in. It's oh, no, it's like the Washington Times gets from the Army the official document of preparation for war with drones against the American people for civil unrest. And no one cares, no one's covering it but Drudge and InfoWars. Uh, and, and we have actual FEMA camp documents, no one cares. But if I go point something at a shed randomly and say that Easter bunnies live in it, everyone would just freak out and believe it. I don't understand it. What's the cop doing now? What's going on here? She's uh, taping a sign onto a protester. <laughs> the police are having some fun with the protesters. Uh, that's a community relations officer. She's getting them to mark themselves, literally like it's Nazi Germany, that you're a protester. But notice she's the sweet, charming one to do it. Literally. I don't think it's mandatory, though. Oh, now she's hugging him. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Get a hotel room, folks. Uh, anyways, uh, public relations. Hey, hey, go talk to her. Ask what it is. Ask what the pink stuff is. Oh, yeah. Ask her if you can pull it across your mouth. What's going on here? What are you doing? This is uh, peace, love, and harmony. Okay. Right? Yeah. So, love for everyone. Yes. Love, love please, from the love police for everyone. everyone. Love. Yes. yes. Love, love please. Yeah. I love you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tagging them with love stickers, Alex. That's well, see, this going. is a very effective psyop because this woman means well. That's you pick a salesman that not, it believes in what they're selling, and 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 they did this in England as well. And the cops actually were on our side and did follow the show, so it's real as well. But still, they're they're still they're being marked, folks. And there's a psyop above this that I bet this cop isn't even aware of. Watson, do you, do you agree with what I just said? I don't know. I don't really know what's going on with this, but they were, they were filming us earlier when we were outside the other area after we initially filmed the Bilderberg members. Paul, ask call. her for one and stick it across your mouth to end the transmission. Sorry, Paul, what were you saying? I don't know where they've been. You know, I'll avoid that. No, no, no you want a sticker. Oh, I don't want to ruin my shirt. It's an expensive shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'll, I'll refrain from that, Alex, if you're sorry. Uh, <laughs> all right. Can we just have it then? Can we have one? Yeah, we'll get one. This is my crew. They don't do anything I tell them. Look at the spoiledness of Watson. Get, get David to go and get one. <laughs> okay, fine. If you don't want to... Oh, my gosh. What's going on here? That cop looks like she's having a whole too good of a time. It is it is evening. She's on Alex, I'm telling you. <laughs> All right, I got to stop it. I got to stop it right now. If you're not watching this, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I think something's going on over here with that cop. That's what I think. Um, <laughs> this is a crazy world. Not just somebody who's dressed up as a cop. <laughs> no, that's a cop, all right. Anyways, you can see the other cops laughing at her. All right, anyways... And then, uh, is that that reporter? What's her name? Who's that, Alex? Yeah, yeah, we got a better Skype connection. Let me talk to her real quick. Hey, I didn't know we featured some of her stuff. Uh, I actually know who she is. The video was so blurry, I had to figure out who she was. That, uh, that's exciting. Tell her good job. Yeah, she can hear you now. Hi, Alex. Hey, Hi, anyways, Alex. Uh, I didn't know that I was direct. I, I wanted to get footage of the world leaders, not send you guys away from them. How many of them are out there now? Outside on the patio? Yeah. 
Um, I would say about 20, maybe 15 right beside the exit and then maybe another 10 like on the uh, walkway and the broadwalk. All right, I'm going to take some phone calls, but it'd be great if you guys would go over there and get some more footage of that and then maybe uh, I got a few words to say to him. Maybe you can translate it over and yell it at him. Okay. All right, Watson, go back over there for me, bro. All right, okay. Thank you, Paul. Let's go to some phone calls right now. I shouldn't screw around with my crew. I apologize. Uh, let's talk to Eric uh, in uh, FEMA Region 7, formerly in the U.S. Let's talk about the head of the CFR, Richard Haas. Go ahead. Hi, Eric. How are you doing today? All right. Uh, video, uh, Richard Haas. Yes. Called, it's called Richard Haas explains that U.S. Near East strategy is the worst of all foreign policies. Yeah, I know. I mean, the CFR has a lot of different ideas in it. But uh, what's your take on that? Well, because um, I want to make sure I, I was quick because I know you got other calls. I basically said, is it an analogy to uh, the Arab Spring to the Bolshevik Revolution? You're talking about the Arab Spring? I'm sorry, I'm not making everything you're saying. Well, I mean, his point, his, his point is good if I take it that a lot of these Arab Springs and the stuff in Europe as well run by Soros, I mean, he admits that, are like the Bolshevik Revolution. They overthrow one bad thing to put in something even worse. So, yes, I, I think, but I'm not sure what spring you said. Uh, so I can't really say if I agree with you. But if you were saying that, yes, I do agree with you. Joseph in Canada, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Is that me? Absolutely, brother. If your name's Joseph. Yes, it is. Thank you. Uh, good talking with you, Alex. Uh, actually, just wanted to make a couple of points about the, uh, the Bilderberg thing. Sure. And actually, the outbreaks that have been happening in Africa with the with the disease and that, but the, with the Bilderberg thing, how is it that, you know, they can walk around with just like armfuls of, you know, obvious documents that, you know, are displayed. They should be somewhere else. Um, there's no way to have um, a, a law force go in there and, and, you know, acquire those. under. Well, look, you know, the point is they're not just hearing presentations. They're being given handouts. They're doing corporate meetings. They are those. It's an it's an illegal governmental, corporate global governance boardroom meeting. They founded the euro. That's in the BBC. They admit it. They're making big decisions. We're skipping this network break. I hear you. I appreciate that call, Joseph. Nick in California, listening on K O M Y thirteen forty in Santa Cruz. You're on the air, Nick. Um, hey, two years ago, you got a call from Canada while you're on your road trip to Bilderberg. He, he's mentioning ice, uh, chemical ice do things, and he's called it bias. And I got a report this year that they're doing chemical ice in the U.S. But last year, they were going, hi, Alex, hi, Alex, you were overseas at Bilderberg. And I, I was going, hey, these guys are like a team of, like, Israel in the, in the hotel. Remember that scene where they assassinated the guy? Yes, I appreciate your call, um... Some of the stuff these callers are bringing up is so esoteric and, and, and that no one will understand it because they're remembering something from a radio show eight years ago or a radio show six years ago. That, yes, a lot of times when I go to Bilderberg, the day it ends, I get death threats, or my family does, and they tell you what you're talking about on the phone to freak you out. Or, you know, they say, I hope your mom or dad dies in the hospital. When, I mean, but they do that, too, not just at Bilderberg. It's just that's happened twice with Bilderberg, maybe three times. You'll have a family member that's sick or something bad happening, and then that's when the call comes in. So they're just sitting there waiting, you know, listening to what you're doing, and then they want to emotionally mess with you. Hey, I can be totally tired, have a headache, and somebody death threats me for real. You just gave me months of energy. I'm in a war. I expect they'll kill me someday. I'll expect they'll torture me. I'm not looking forward to it. I don't want it. But, buddy, I'm in the game. Whatever it takes, I'll go as far as I have to. I'm beyond committed. And they don't like that. That's the one thing they're scared of, folks. You got to just get committed against these people. I want to say this again. So many people act like that I'm trying to scare people. No, I think you're like me. 
illegitimate crooks are taking over. So what if they got power and weapons? They don't have moral high ground. We're going to expose them. I'm not going to just let them run my life and run me over because they're a bunch of killers and scum. I instinctively want to deal with them. Not because I'm a hero, folks. I want to live. I want to survive. I want to thrive. I have an instinct to have a good civilization. And I'm committed. And I'll use the analogy for the 500th time, probably. World War II pilots, folks, they flew into the flak. It wasn't like, you know there's guns out there that fire artillery that explodes with flak that goes into your engines and goes through your windows and kills you, you know, moving 800 miles an hour on average flak once it detonates. You know, you know, you know you could die. Oh, look, you, you know, you, you know, we could get you when you fly over our city. We're going to be, sh of, yes, I know. Yes, yes, yes. So call and death threat all you want. Pull out the stops, dirty tricks, whatever. I don't want it to happen, but I'm at a certain level do because that's how I get through any fears I had. Whatever, it's already done. You've already killed me in my mind. I'm beyond your grasp. You understand that? You could even get me, torture me, and turn me into a mind-numb zombie down the road and say you defeated Alex Jones. No, you didn't. Understand the Zen belief, which I do buy into, because it's prima facie true, that I did this in the time-space continuum. It lives forever. It, 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 it happened. I am free now. This is me. I made these decisions. I'm committed. If I'm defeated, I win, because I fought back. I win. You lose. You're evil. I'm not. I love life. You decided to be failures. It's that simple. It's the animating contest of liberty. It is the journey, not the destination. It's about making the right decisions in this life. Real quick, we've got a Polish journalist who got some interesting photos, and we're going to talk to them real fast. Then we're going to get some footage in of the globalists. That's the number one thing I want. And then we're going to take some more phone calls from Michael and Toby and Sean and Mike and Clay. So wake up, callers, because I know when I make, sit them on hold for 30 minutes, they sound like they've been drinking corn syrup, or not corn syrup, cough syrup. Uh, Paul Watson, let's talk to this fella. Yeah, this is a journalist who witnessed something very interesting with the mayor of Atlanta. So tell us your name, tell us what you saw. Yeah, my name is Jan, I'm from Poland. Uh, I work for, uh, for prisonplanet.pl. And uh, today I came to Denmark to see the uh, gathering, uh, uh, Bilderberg Group. And uh, for all day I just make uh, shots from uh, the bridge nearby uh, hotel. And I saw the uh, mayor of Atlanta here. We have some shots of him. And lots of shots of the guy who spent the time in the garden behind the hotel. And what did he see? Did you have any kind of interaction with him? Uh, no, he was chit-chatting with some uh, other uh, people uh, in the garden behind, yeah. And I just, I was uh, far, far behind, uh, like 100 meters from, from him, so I just... Well, great. Tell line. him fantastic. If he sends us the photos, we'll post them. Thank you. All right, Paul, I'm going to take some more calls in overdrive. I'd like you to get over there, please. I want to see, and with our camera, I know we've got high def that you're going to upload, so what's the point? Well, uh, TV viewers and radio listeners want to hear the description of this or see it. Thank you so much. Uh, briefly, don't forget, we will sell out a super female vitality in the next... Week max, probably the next few days. If you want to get it, get it. The male stuff works on females from the feedback we've gotten really well, but not like the female vitality. It's got two other herbs and a different combination of the other eight. It's going to sell out InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com. It'll probably sell out in the next week as well. We've got more of it, but at the new X2 with the multi-million-year-old purple crystal, um, Iodine, nobody else has got it. It's true nation iodine. X2, it's even better than the survival shield that's proprietary we have. It's excellent. I think this is probably too strong for kids. Consult your physician. So I would use the regular, you know, uh, it, it's good to have both. This is just almost as twice as strong and um, a form of iodine nobody else has. And it's just incredible for what it's done for me and my body and supercharging. The iodine conspiracy is amazing. Survival Shield X2, InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. Don't forget the Sunday show coming up this Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. We'll have all the big Bilderberg wrap-up coverage, 4 to 6 p.m. Central. Tell friends and family there's a war on for the mind. You are the soldiers on the front line. Make no mistake. I mean, it's really happening. You're battling the New World Order, whether you want to admit that's happening or not you're in an epic struggle uh michael in oregon thanks for calling you're on the air 
Hey, Alex. I uh, just want you to know, I yesterday I called Ron Wyden and I called Greg Walden. Ron Wyden's my senator here. Good. And Greg Walden is the only Republican that we have in Oregon. And I told them both. I said, listen, you know, the Logan Act, you know, it's, it's a violation of law to meet in this capacity. And I want you guys to investigate it. You have a duty to do it. And I'm getting ticked off that you guys won't even do anything. And I get the same response all the time. Well, I'll pass the message on to the senator. It's like, well, it's not a message. It's a request for action because you have a, a responsibility under federal law to do something. I mean, what is it? What do we have to do? I mean, I'm a software engineer, and I sit at home and I code all day, but I'm getting tired of these the blatant... I agree, but if you call the FBI, it's run by, uh, you know, the Justice Department, total criminals. Uh, if you call... I mean, the police don't like it in England, but they, they're not. They, it's compartmentalization. Great point. Great caller. Michael, great. Thank you so much. Mike, Clay, and Toby, final caller straight ahead in overdrive this Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m., folks. You the, are listening the, the, the video to feed continues on at Infowars.com forward slash show today. or at the Bilderberg icon, the all-seeing eye on Infowars. All right, folks, the Bilderberg creeps have snuck back into the building, but we got Paul Watson and others, activist journalists out there on the street. I want to take a few final calls. Paul, I know you'll have more on the Nightly News tonight. Seven, great job. I know it's already evening time over there. Go take a break, but, you know, uh, Saturday and Sunday's when we'll get another media push. Friday's not the best day to put news out, but we've got to get into the fact that they're violating laws and a set in policy. We need articles on that. We need a master article with the best photos and videos all together. I know my crew's doing that here, but just round of applause to the whole InfoWars team and Karen Knight and David Knight, uh, husband and wife team, and, and Josh Owens. Fabulous job. Any other points? Uh, and any other points from your friend there, the Fräulein? Um, yeah, I guess I'll end with, you know, they're not in there deciding our future. They're deciding their future. That's what they're interested in. And, and of course, that affects our future. But just want to make that distinction. That's what I believe is going in, uh, on in there. No, I tend to agree with you. That's a good point. And again, if we can just point the camera over at the area where they're normally at. So people watching this in Denmark who are going to be protesting tomorrow know where to go. And, and, and I guess you got a telephoto lens because, I mean, no, I understand they're in that building, but where is it where they're having the cocktails and smoking the cigars? It's on the left-hand side around the, the corner adjacent that way where they're having the cocktails. That's where we were earlier when you had the interaction with the Bilderberg member. I wonder what kind so they're having. There I wonder what kind they're having. Do you know what they were drinking? <laughs> I saw champagne. I saw champagne. Oh, champagne. It's Ugh. Like Liquid headache in a bottle. There, like, the, <laughs> bubbly. But I walked I walked by there. Uh, it's an open kind of boardwalk for, it's the public. And you can walk and there's like a playground. People are jumping off into the water and like sunbathing and stuff. And it's interesting how you know, they're just allowed to block all that off even though it's a pedestrian area. So Henry Kissinger is out there just bashing like a dead whale? Yeah, we, I think we got Kissinger as well. We just got the back of his head. But if you go, if you look at the picture, which is on the Infowars story of um, Wolfenson and Etienne Davignon, they're both smoking a pipe. They look completely smug. That's, I think that's quite an icon. <laughs> well, they are, do run the planet to a great extent. Why not be smug? And, and again, Kissinger does go out and address sometimes. I'm not kidding. So if you see like a really horrific looking old woman, like a troll dressed up in a pink dress, that may be him meeting somebody. It may be, but David Rockefeller is not here this year, is he? So, oh, David's what... always attended until now. That means he must be near death. Well, you would imagine. I mean, come on, been waiting so long. What is he? 87, 88? <laughs> He's in his 90s, isn't he, Rockefeller? Yeah, yeah. None of them ever made it past 100. It's an ongoing bet. John D. the first tried to make it to 100 and died a few months early. I mean, it's a big deal. He's trying to go to 98. He's 98. Satan has the pit opening the portal. Ah, come to me, my baby. All right. Absolutely great. I hope they know we're ready for them when they come out. Where do you think where do you think he's going when he dies? Oh, purgatory. For a lot of questioning. He'll probably just come back as a zombie and nobody will notice the difference. He, he, he probably actually gets sent to Santa Claus's workshop. He's going to be a mushroom, Alex. Do what? He's going to be a mushroom in his next life. Exactly. That's People will eat him and hallucinate. All right. Listen, great job. I'm sorry to all the callers. Sunday, more calls.
uh, whatever, Monday, everything. Great job, crew. You guys be safe, Watson and others. All right? And we salute you out there. Everybody's really rooting for you. All right. Thanks, Alex. All right. There goes the Wasselhoff, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Sorry to the callers. I got to a lot of you, though. Um, great job to the crew, everybody. I keep saying great job, great job. It's very fulfilling to have our reporters out there to be breaking big news, to be forcing this out in the open. I feel like my team just won a Super Bowl again. And uh, this is how we defeat them. And we build optimism. We're not pessimistic. We can win. See you back this Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Nightly News tonight.